Hey! Yo. What's up? What's up? Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome Yo, to... Yo, that bottle that Ian broke earlier. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Pull one out, rip. Uh, yeah, What, what was it? What was it a bottle of? Just water. Was, was it something water? worth breaking? No, I keep it in a ragu jar. It's just water, and I've been asked many times if it's a homebrew, and uh, the answer is it is, and it was very valuable to me. Yeah, way to go, Ian. Um, Look what you did. And I can only expect compensation will come later, but we'll... we'll, we'll homebrew it. water? Like, dinner. like you're <laughs> right collecting right, it in a rain barrel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that not what homebrew is? Right off the <laughs> eavesdrop. <laughs> Actually, he buys ice cubes, and you just... <laughs> oh All right, so uh, this is uh, this is episode love. six of the Ape Audio podcast. We are joined by some sweet fellas from a local band in Kitchener Waterloo, Romancer. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Sure. Yes. Yeah. My name's Ben. I'm the bass player and basically the backup dancer. Yeah. I love hey. it. Uh, I'm Adam. I sing and play guitar. I'm Riley. I play guitar and sing. Damn, I'm boy. Christian. I invited them here. I'm Ian. I sleep here. Mm. I'm Patrick. I don't break everything that I touch. <laughs> and over there we got Devin, and man in the man Devin. in the boards. Yeah. Hi Devin. Yeah. Hi Devin. Hi Devin. Hi guys. Devin. How beautiful he is, man. Look at it. Almost as you. Damn, I get to stare at you all day. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys have a good week. Everything cool? Yeah. yeah. So far. Anything Everything neat happen together. in your life? We just moved in together. Yeah. All of you guys? The whole band? Uh, no. Uh, Sans Ben, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm still living. Uh, I'm still living in my own apartment, uh, but it's right down the street from them. They're yeah. up on Herb Street, uh, so we just moved them into a big, big house together. Uh, Nathan was nice. just the last one moved in. And what, what, what day did we do that? Like, uh, I don't know, the sixth? week and a half ago. Like yeah, the sixth yeah. or the fifth or something. Oh yeah, okay, so just just about a week and a half ago. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we got them all moved in together. We got a little. They set up like a little jam space in the basement. It's it's oh, a really sweet. it's a really fucking huge house. So I'm I'm really I'm really proud of you guys. So are you maintaining a cautious distance? <laughs> are you protecting your jars out. of ragu? He's, he's so close. He, he, like Ben yeah, lives man. down the street. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Honestly, right. that's just for convenience. So I can text him at three in the morning, like, "Yo, you up? What are you doing?" Right, <laughs> right, right. Send pic of Bob and Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a nice pad? Mm. Uh, it's so yes, yeah. We it. we vacuumed out all the spiders from the basement. So nice. Yeah, How many nice. spiders? Oh, so many. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had an incident with spiders. Like I I was vacuuming them out and I uh, was about to like throw out like the the bag and the hand vac and I saw one and like it scared me so I just like threw it and like dust went all over the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you at all. You want to yeah. hear crazy some crazy <laughs> shit that happened to me last week? Let's hear it. There's yeah. a fucking rat in the roof of my car. Gnarly. So I pull up what? to work. I usually sit there for a couple minutes. I'm uh, just reading the news, whatever. I hear some crackling on my roof. I thought, you know, I pulled out of my heated underground parking. Maybe the roof's expanding. It's just, it's making its natural uh, boat noises, as, as, it, as it were. And uh, whatever, I go into work, and then I come back out on my first break, and something is skitter- full-on skittering around. Like, it's, this thing is freaking out to get out. So I'm like, okay, I guess it's alive, and I guess I have to deal with it now. How did, how do you think the rat got in the roof of That's your exactly car? What I'm yeah. I have no fucking clue. There was a bunch of shit in my trunk, so I'm thinking. Actual shit? Yeah, well, rat shit, not human oh. shit. Oh. Well, there was okay. a dookie that I tossed in you there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the short one. That's your property <laughs> one. That's your territory, man. You got to market it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I I don't know. Maybe I was like, I had a bag, or like when I was doing groceries, maybe this rat ratatouille its way was just holding uh, on and wow. stowed away in the trunk and then I, I assume it tried to get out by just like sticking its head wherever it could get and then it ended up in my roof wow so basically yeah. I, I just threw a trap down in my trunk oh, no. and i caught this guy and originally i just thought it was a mouse right like i'm not gonna think it's a rat we live in kitchener waterloo have you ever seen a rat running around here i haven't, I haven't either i got one in my apartment yeah Hopefully, hopefully, I didn't kill your rat. Hopefully, yeah. it was a it was a vagabond rat. So it was like a cage, and it like went in the. Cage so I I picked up. My uncle trap. said, "Don't get a standard trap that's gonna snap down on its head, because yeah. its guts will blow all over my my oh, interior." So I got this container that when it steps in and it steps on these two metal plates, it gets electrocuted. So, yeah, it it got shocked, and then it just dies inside this thing. So I go the next morning, and I open it up, and there's just this really long tail sticking out of this thing. And I'm like, I don't think mice have tails that, like, kind of spiral out like that, and it's, like, had some thickness to it. 
Damn. Oh, that's so I, girthy. I oh. opened the container up. <laughs> yeah, it was thick, boy. Damn, like... I opened that container up, and I just, like, lost it. Like, I just threw this shit across my car. <laughs> Garbage can. And, yeah, um, yeah, then I just took my car to get completely detailed. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what the rat touched, but you guys better take care of it. And I still <laughs> smell like your vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah it man. smells like industrial soap. In I, uh, okay. I lived, like, in London, east of Adelaide, so, like big like homeless population in that area there was like a needle drop box outside my house it was, it was like a really old place uh i had christmas lights in my room and i had them like kind of scale up the corner of my wall and then they would like outline the like the, like the ceiling of my room and i remember walking in my room one day and turning the light switch on and just like literally a rat just at the top <laughs> of the christmas lights in the corner of my room and i was just like holy fuck and then it, like <laughs> Like suicide dive like, <laughs> onto my bed and sc scurries into the into the vent. Damn! Wow. So that was after we uh our, we had to give a, a cat. We had a cat in the house and we didn't see any like mice or any rats. Oh, they're like and I'm then, free, uh, right? And then like finally the, the mice could come out. Like that's crazy. Cat, yeah. Yeah. Moral of the story: rats are fucking disgusting. Yes. <laughs> that's true. Man, pour one out for like thick car roof rat, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. Car roof rat. Yo, he was kind of cute. One. His yeah. colors were pretty nice. He, he had like a it. little caramel belly. He wasn't like a nasty beady rat, but his tail just really freaked me out. Oh, yeah. is, that, is that what you thought when you looked into its cold, dead eyes? Oh, dude. Um, oh, this was a no, thing. the first thing I thought was to snap a picture and send it to Lauren and say, kill confirmed. <laughs> How did she react? Oh, she she oh, wasn't cool with it. Yeah, probably not. Oh, Zippy zap on it. Yeah. Okay, so... um. We got a couple questions for you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, what? A yeah. firing round for y'all. Yeah. Oh. So, um, basically, when we've had a musical guest on, the way we start the show off is asking, uh, like, a little bit about your musical history. And the way we like to structure it is, um, basically, you can tell us your first musical memory, be it something that you're super embarrassed of, um, your middle point, probably around late elementary school, high school, where you heard something that really kind of piqued your interest and you knew there was something a little bit different going on here Tell musically that side a bit yep and then kind of where you're at now so wow. if you would just want to like start at the end of the line and then work mm -hmm. work over this way <clears throat> okay okay i guess yeah um earliest memory earliest musical memory was like people at my church like 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 the kind of like younger crowd from then like burning me old cds of like kind of christian rock bands like fucking like audio adrenaline and shit was really cool reliant k Creed. reliant k was the shit yeah, <laughs> okay i see shit. you i see absolutely. you over here reliant k is still the shit i would sustain that yes absolutely reliant k was there um but yeah no and then eventually i got i got so into it that my my most embarrassing memory i think would be my sister was having like a sleepover party and we we had to be like she, she's two years younger than me uh, I probably had to be like seven or eight and she would have been like five or six right and I went downstairs and I offered to <laughs> fucking um oh mm. <laughs> put on a show for them and so Damn. I got in like a tank top and I mean looking back at it to dancing to Christian rock I mean the dance moves were very like reminiscent of what I would call now magic bike shit <laughs> um, and so like yeah that's Faithful that's, Mike. That's faithful Mike. <laughs> Yo, righteous Mike. Righteous <laughs> Mike. <laughs> so yeah, that's um, and uh, well, that's pretty much uh, that pretty much describes where I am right now too. Yes. Yeah, so, cool. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, now we're. Uh, I mean, now it's 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 super cool. Like being being more legitimate about it and feeling more legitimate about it, but. Gotta remember where you come from. Yeah, for Gotta sure. Where you come from. Well, maybe maybe for the sake of like comedy, yeah. do you guys wanna? You guys can each do your first memory, so you can bail your buddy out from oh, just that terror. Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to hear this yeah. shit. So you said our first memory. Yeah. Yeah, first okay. memory. Like, I guess like for me, I told these guys it was like Aaron Carter. Like I was bumping this Aaron Carter mm. cassette tape in my backyard Solid. out of this like Fisher Price like bulky ass cassette player and it probably had a face with like eyelashes on it and it was dope as hell wow. <laughs> did it look like those cars that have like eyelashes above the light yeah something something similar oh, those are the worst <laughs> oh b44 <laughs> this was my first oh album my these guys god. Oh my god. b44 let me get oh down on you yeah. 
Yeah. Metal cover though. Me. Oh my god, oh. metal cover? Actually, oh, that's probably not a good me. idea. Yeah. I don't get a good. I don't get a good feeling. In your face. I, don't know. Yeah, I think the one, magic this is. Album, right <laughs> the there. magic is, is like preserved in the pot. Yeah. Remember that kid like finding that um that little like you know those like red things you would look into with like, little pictures that was like cycle? yeah. Oh, Remember oh, he yeah. like looked into that or something and that's how the video yeah. started. It was like that like yeah. Each, like, yeah. Actually, <laughs> such a good. Video yeah. Each three has a great breakdown of that video and how creepy it actually is. There's a there's a video that gives me a similar vibe it's uh it's the song called butterfly and it's like uh like crazy, crazy town, town. Like crazy yeah town. i get a similar vibe from that song <laughs> that was actually uh like my first explicit cd that i ever purchased or <laughs> forced my parents Your to mama purchase didn't like for it. me um, yeah <laughs> oh yeah i'll do my uh earliest musical yeah, memory uh, so uh i listen to a lot of music in the car with my like my parents i i didn't really like they, they listen to a lot of christian music i grew up in the church like benny uh, so I wasn't, I hadn't really found music that I'd connected with yet. Uh, but my cousin gave me a Reliant K C D. Nice. And it was the anatomy of tongue in cheek. And that's like when I, mm. I think that first time I encountered pop punk and it like really like resonated with me. And I think like that was like the start of me like getting into music cool. and stuff. Cool. Cool. Do you want to? That wasn't embarrassing yeah. or shit. Yeah, sorry, dude. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> you can do now. better than that. Come <laughs> you know, on. A normal CD that people there was still never a hymn to that you were really jiving with. I, I really liked it. Yeah. It's uh, like, that's so funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah there was uh, no filthy hymns or anything? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> filthy hymns. Dude, ban it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of my like first like kind of point where I was like actually interested in the kind of music. It's probably like the complete opposite of both of your experiences like i had an older brother who like listened to slipknot and like ramstein and stuff like that when i was like i was like nine so like i got into that like and was like really stoked on that and like he was all about kind of like the goth fashion and everything so as oh a nine-year-old like rave goth no, like not cyber goth. Like, no, yeah, no, 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 like I wish that like, was right. Like, <laughs> like, like trench coat, like trench coat, chains, okay, okay. Yeah. Like, bobby pins everywhere. Yeah, okay. yeah, like punk goth and <laughs> cyber goth. So, like that being basically the only kind of avenue I had into like music, I was like, that's cool. So I basically my whole fourth and fifth grade just wore black T-shirts from Zellers. <laughs> basically and just listen to Slipknot yo you must have been stoked when Zellers was liquidating their entire stock <laughs> yeah no that was before then yeah. but okay. oh, yeah would have been dope. But, so you... did you just like ask like Carrie to get you like mom can you just get me a pack of black shirts from, from yeah Zellers? no it was Hanes like... I said Hanes not Fruit of the Loop <laughs> yeah no no it was Cherokee Cherokee uh, uh, well, so... no and people were like why are you wearing the same shirt every day and I'm like no I have like 10 of the same <laughs> ones <laughs> And, like, they were like, that's not any better. And I'm like, oh. Uh, dude, I was in the same boat of, <laughs> yeah. as you. I still yeah. am to this day. Like, same. I just all black everything for the most part. And yeah. just, like, if I could, it's just black plain tees all the fucking time. True. Yeah, with black dicky shorts. Yeah, yeah, man. There it goes. All right, you want to pass it back down the line and kind of do, like, your middle turning point? When did you hear something that really inspired you? Coming of age. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think, uh... I think when I started getting into like, well, I, I start I started going to kind of hardcore shows. Like it was still sort of with people from the church, so it was very like kind of Christian metal corey stuff. But I I remember metal like, Corey. Being, I think I know him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, metal Corey. He was there. <laughs> Ramadan Steve was there. Uh, Corey. Uh, uh, fucking, uh, fucking Wood Taylor. All those guys. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so so I started going to those, and I, I must have been like 13, 14. I remember being just so inspired by what I saw, and it made me want to kind of take a turn around for more like uh, the, the pop punky side of things and get really get, get get really invested in heavier music, right? And that's uh, that began my journey right there, just through like hopping into a path of obliteration uh, pit over oh, at um, baby. yeah oh, baby. At, uh, at like pitch and praise you know. or something, yeah, P O O. R.I.P. Who's right? the shit? Yeah, Who and so <laughs> blind, the blind the carrier. Yeah, yeah, blind the carrier. Shout out Tim. Shout out Tim we'll, Warden. We'll shout out Lee. Oh yeah. Shout out all those fucking guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> blind the carrier was definitely iconic. Path of Obliteration, Three Crowns when they came out later, mm. right? And um, yeah, set so anchors. That, yes. Oh, oh god, man, taking back to Wellesley Arena. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Whoa, man. Oh my god, I remember being at um, 
the old New Hamburg uh, arena, which was like just like kind of central downtown ish New Hamburg. And uh, I remember uh, being there one night with my cousin who was visiting from North Carolina, and I spent the last of my money on uh, a set anchors t shirt. And then my dad ended up uh, not being able to drive him and me home, and my mom didn't have the car that night, she was working late. And so we ended up stranded in New Hamburg until like 3 or 4 a.m. <laughs> That's all he was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll just get a cab for you guys or something. It was like, okay, thanks, and then it never showed <laughs> oh, up. <shit. laughs> yeah, the cabbie, the cabbie knew. To New Hamburg, oh, like, all right, I guess, but I got a nice set of anchor shirt, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know you New Hamburg, kind of downtown. Right, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, my, something, I think, like, obviously, I mentioned pop punk, and that phase definitely lasted until, like, closer to the end of high school so I listened to so much neon I listened to the main forever the sickest kids all time low just like just like such like myspace pop punk yo that shit was the best it was it was it was good it was good uh but (laughs) what uh what was did you have like a rotating myspace song like you know how you could set a song to play when people would come to your page did you have like a certain song that you would play or did you have it rotating on like a weekly basis like (laughs) I did I'm definitely old enough to have MySpace, but I got MySpace when Facebook was already a thing, so it was on its way out. Word, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, I dated myself terribly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Don't don't sweat it. Uh, So, yeah, I think when I discovered post-rock was when that was kind of like a little switch in my head. Yeah, I know it's kind of like, is that... Would that be your answer too? Do you think or yeah, similar? pretty much yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was it was Andrew. Uh, used to be mm. in a band, this guy Andrew Prosser, and he he had the sound hey, cloud. Hey, yeah, Prosser, Andrew Prosser. Yeah, I think there's more than one, <laughs> unless you guys. There's, there's, more, more. Yeah. there's multiple. There's multiple. Prosser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Andrew Prosser. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Prosser. All, all, yeah. Thank you for bringing me to some of my first shows, Andrew. Oh man. If you ever see this. Yeah. Okay, so um, <laughs> post rock. Oh, yeah, what, yeah. What, what kind of band? Like, what specific bands were you were you digging into? Um, Life Story Monologue. Cool. That was my first like big like my first post rock band that I got into. I like love their fusion of like post hardcore, <laughs> post rock. They love like As Cities Burn. I loved As, As Cities Burn. Yeah, you uh, too. They yeah. like brand new. They liked. Uh, I'm sure they liked a lot of like post rock music and like art rock and stuff like that too. But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Cloud yeah, Kicker. yeah. Andrew showed me Godspeed. Yeah, that's my answer. Dope. Cool. Um, probably like the point where I first like got a got like serious about music, like thinking like, man, I need to like start a band or something. Was when I was in like grade nine, an intake of Glass played my high school. Oh yeah. Oh, and I was like, cause like the guitarist Zach Wardarski was also at, like he was like super 12 when I was in grade 9 or something super 12 yeah, yeah. I, I love that. that and like so that. like and, and they played like a like a benefit concert and I was like whoa this is like a thing that happens locally this is so cool like I want to do this so like just like that kind of got me started into like just going to shows and stuff like back at like the 515 in Cambridge and stuff like that um and then, like, it wasn't until probably, like, end of high school and then, like, university where I was, like Adam said, like, kind of started getting into, like, post-rock stuff. Like, just people there showing me, like, Explosions in the Sky and uh, Hammock, God is an Astronaut, stuff like that. And then, like, it wasn't until, like, I saw, like, the early formations of this band where I saw, like, a local, like, kind of manifestation of, like, a post-rock kind of bass band cool. and I was like that's it it's cool so and I remember so Riley I, yeah. like, being like I remember playing like Columbia Lake or something like an early version of that and like us just jamming to that on stage and I remember Riley being like what what yeah. was that the show we played at the loft the yeah. one time uh, yeah. Button Factory but oh, the Factory. Button Factory yeah that was the point where I was like I need to like be a part of this somehow <laughs> that's cool Sick. yeah I think for all of us like that was a big thing when you realized that crazy dope music like that is being made oh, in your city so yeah. or like in the tri-cities and that was just like something that seemed so far out because like we're relatively small compared to mm. anywhere else you know right. and once you kind of like you had your finger on that button you didn't want to let it go mm. um, alright so where are you guys at now musically then uh, now musically um, I'm focusing in like a lot of my a lot, a lot of my efforts like 
more like for for this for this band I'm writing mostly like lyrical stuff a lot of obviously stuff on the bass I've been kind of um, diving into guitar stuff like now and again I don't I don't really uh, focus my efforts as much there right because I'm very into like soul and funk now and I'm, I'm picking up a lot of great bass bass techniques from there and originally it was just sort of that like I want to learn how to play bass like these soul and funk guys and then you end up like actually really fucking digging a lot of it like we've been really into um i think collectively tower of power mm. and that was the that <laughs> was uh i like your style live uh, yeah tower of power the that specific was specific one live version that is 1999 yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd wake up oh. riley would have his coffee this was we'd... this was the the tour we were just yeah. on in the states yeah yeah. yeah yeah every morning like we'd just like start going to the next city and like the first song that would go on was this song by tower of power and it just like kept me going throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's How long sick. was that tour? Uh, two, two, weeks. two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. It was. It was yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe like how well received we were and everything. But but yeah. I mean that's like the like this band has kind of pushed me to push myself a little bit more like in developing better techniques, right? And in writing Same. stuff that's very yeah. like that, that that's very feely and very vibey sometimes for us, yeah. right? And and working collaboratively with people, which I've I, I can't say I've ever really done before, in like in writing music in the mm-hmm. past. So this is a this has been a huge a huge growth experience for me since I think it's, I think since day one. And it's going to continue great. to be. I hope. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's really cool. Like, um, yeah, I I was going to bring this up later, but we can get into it right now. Get um, into it, man. I'll get right into it. So yeah, you guys toured over the summer mm. with Silver Age mm-hmm. through yeah. the states. Like, how was that? Like. <clears throat> was was that something super out there and different for you guys? Like, yeah, good yeah. experience. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. we, we were like, so yeah. we went in my stepdad's tiny pickup truck that he was gracious <laughs> enough to lend us. Um, yeah, and ma- imagine and like, it's the kind of badass. Like, it's, it's the kind it of truck where it's like, really, it's, it's like two like front seats and then the two back seats are like those fold down chairs. Yeah. yeah. Like, face into we're each other. In kind of. back. Yeah. Uh, um, change it up sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Riley ever sat If you hit their in the Instagram, back. I think they have a photo right before they yeah, were. I, I, yeah. I drove most of the time mostly yeah. because I didn't want to sit in the back. Yeah. But, yeah, I was just going to ask were you guys like rotating on those shitty no. ass seats? Yeah. It was a pretty fair. So they're just like are you sure you yeah. don't want to drive? Yeah. And you're like no, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. That's yeah that's so that guy. Oh, nice. So see Senior like you yeah. can see me uh like uh in the middle on the right and uh that like that you can see the the door like the, there's yeah, two you, doors. You are clearly. the width. Oh, okay. of the door. I am yeah. the width of that door. So oh, so you're just like sitting in there like this? absolutely. We're much, stuffed, yeah. like facing each yeah, other. Yeah, like I'd I'd yeah. constantly feel Adam's shoulder. Yeah. In yeah. the back of my driver's seat. Yeah. I feel bad because like I'm sure I was like singing a lot and like singing in your ear a lot. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. We're all. Singing you were singing too. We were yeah. all singing. Yeah. Was that yeah, the but, uh, longest tour you guys have ever done? Yes. Yeah. 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 Was no, really we, we were. To do that uh, in the States, no, yeah. we had we we had how many off days? I think two 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 off days in the states. Two or three. One, two or three. One off day in Ontario. Safe to say. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. yeah. What was, was the uh, one thing that you took for granted, like while being away for that long, that maybe you weren't as prepared for? It doesn't have to be a huge thing, but you know. Uh, options other than fast food. Yeah. Like yeah. The familiarity true. of like food in your. Food, food yeah. in your fridge and we, food that you buy and make, right? That was tough. I lived off quesadillas for two weeks. Ooh, so that's rough. rough. Dang. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. what kind of quesadillas are they from a... Uh, so not only dude, were you Taco singing Bell. in the car, your fowls were also singing? Cheese quesadillas oh from Taco God. Bell. Yeah, but, <laughs> but they're fine. Yeah, they're great. Nothing, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a Salco syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think so, too. Yeah. I eat cheesy gordita crunches for the rest of my life and just be okay. Yeah. <laughs> they had the fire sauce and, like, oh, yeah. I'm obviously grabbing, like, all right, handfuls yeah, of right, fire sauce right. out the door of Taco Bell. I can smell it already. Taco Bell in the States is surprisingly not shit like i was i was pretty mm. i was pretty content living off like bean burritos for those two weeks i'm so pretty impressed well how sustained. you ate vegan for like for, for as long as you did in the states i think i broke vegan yeah, for a sure a couple for only sure a couple times, times. there yeah. had to be like cheese and cheese sour cream on a few things now and again yeah i should have just got some refried beans put them in like one of those big water ball backpacks and like yeah. <laughs> Oh, the bean bag. Oh, yeah. You just have like that film shit on your over your mouth with all the beans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The bean starch. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
while you guys were playing in the States, was there any memory that sticks out for any of you guys in particular? When we came home, like that oh, Hope yeah. Fest show was just, oh, oh was just that was like, like you came yeah, that. that was yeah, it, yeah. That was and amazing. we had yeah, a full, so I feel like we had a full home. two weeks of like practice, of like preparation for this Hope Fest show. And I just like, I, I psyched myself up for like hours before That's we cool. played. And yeah, it was like, you guys killed it. I remember you thanks, even saying man. you're like, this was like, you are you were saying something like, this, holy shit, this is the biggest crowd we've ever played in front of. For real, for real, yeah. It was. Kinda, yeah just, that's cool, though. Yeah, and a like, lot of people gave you big ups for that. Like A lot of bands that were going, like, did you guys see that romance or band? <laughs> oh, I remember Three Crowns did that. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Three Crowns, oh, yeah, the guy, yeah, he was like, he was like, did you guys watch that fucking romance band? Yeah. And then they just went into their set, and then yeah. they just went, holy, or something, and then they just went into their set, oh, and the rest of it, so. Yeah, that was really fun. That's yeah. unreal. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was a pretty sweet setup. So, how long were you guys in the States? Three weeks? Two. Two weeks? Two weeks, two weeks yeah. overall. Round out two weeks, then you come home and play. Yeah. yeah. Then we, we an one amazing more in the States after our, show, after our homecoming festival show. that's been put on by one of our our, our good friends. Our all-time favorites, yeah, Kyle Daddy Wop. Daddy Wop. Daddy Wop. Shout out. Daddy Wop. Shout out. could do that like, we just sample that like 50 <laughs> with someone going Wop, 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 All right, so um, you guys want to want to hop back to some basics? Maybe uh, how did Romancer initially become? How did you guys form? Where did the name come from? That kind of thing? So, so there's a, a band prior to Romancer and it was Lancaster but and, well, we had a, oh. we had a song called Fireworks and I just I remember searching on YouTube like like on my friend's computer like oh dude I just released a song check it out and then like it was yeah we uh, we had a you, you would search Lancaster Fireworks but our song was like you know yeah, number 30 number 50 to... because you're gonna get all oh, Lancaster Pennsylvania Fireworks yeah. and I was just thinking like oh this Fucking sucks. Like Lancaster, <laughs> probably Lancaster school Lancaster band. Lancaster yeah, school working, band. You know? Just like all these things. You, that your are, first yeah. lesson in marketing. Yeah, yeah. for real. Yeah. yeah. Lancaster Street homeless man. Yeah. 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 But then when That's we uh, uh, we had uh, we split with uh, one of uh, our, uh, our friends who was in the band and uh, Riley joined on guitar and then when it was around the time that uh, I think my music taste was changing from like kind of just standard kind of like emo pop punk like that vein but to more of a like oh man i uh, got into like yeah yeah experimental i guess uh, i it's really started like uh drawing more from like like the, the like the life story vibe oh uh, we got into this band called lobby boxer from st mm. louis and it was it was it got like all of our songs got faster uh all of our songs got more explosive and just like more melodic and it was it had uh it was half because of our influences changing and half because of Riley joining and it just became a new band. So like object objectively became a new band. So like, yeah, we decided to change the name. Sure. Yeah. yeah I saw you guys uh, describe yourselves as towing the line between soft intimacy and explosive <laughs> <Yeah>. aggression. <laughs> and I thought that was like such a suiting thing. I don't know who True. wrote that in the Spotify yeah. description, True, but I was like, yeah. hell yeah, that nails it perfectly. Wow. Yeah, just la really loud sometimes, really soft sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that juxtaposition is nice, though. Loud. Loud. Well, it's always really surprising to you. Like, I've been listening to you guys for a couple months. Oh, uh, I think I first got into contact um, when I saw you were playing Hope Fest because we were just getting this thing rolling and trying to figure out how we wanted to do the podcast. And I reached oh, out to yeah. Kyle and I was like, hey, man, like, you got anybody we should put on and like bring on the show? And he was like, look at the Hope Fest um, banner. And just pick a band that you like their name and invite them because they're all local. Yeah. And I was like, okay, dope. And I'm going through, and I I'd, I'd heard of you guys before, but I'd never listened to any of your music. And I was like, I like that name. I've seen them around enough. Okay, I'm going to listen to this now. Wow, this is really different from anything I hear anybody making in the area. This is oh, really cool. Dude, and then, yeah, I shouted out to you guys. I was like, hey, yeah, we're making this thing. I don't know if we have a name yet. I don't know if we know what it is. <laughs> it's a podcast. Would you yeah. be interested in coming on? And Whoever answered back was basically like, yeah, just get in touch when, whenever you're ready to go and we'll hop on. Oh, yeah. And then later, like, I, I didn't even tell these guys that I had messaged you guys. And when I did bring it up, Ian's like, oh, yeah, Romancer. Like, yeah. I know some of those guys. And Devin's like, oh, yeah, Romancer. I know some of those yeah, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yep. yeah, we're going to get you on. It's going to be next week. 
already I love already that. on I it. Love, I, love that's that. awesome. I love that harassment. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. oh. like, it's it, it's a weird thing to like bring your and and Riley can relate to this too. Because like, it's weird. It's weird like talking about like a band project, or, like a musical thing at work. Like you don't. Yeah. You, you don't you don't kind of like expect people to, like understand, which is sick working with you two when you were when you were still working with me. Like that was. That was that was cool to like finally have somebody to kind of like connect with. Okay, like yes, like you you, you understand now. Yes, okay, this is very yeah. it's yeah. very important to me. Okay, thank you. That's nice being able to connect with a coworker. <laughs> yeah, with that stuff. Because if you're like I play in a band, they're like. Oh, wow. they're like have you yeah. have you gone oh, on the yeah. voice? Have you tried going? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> that, that's like, their paradigm. Yeah. Yeah. Like you guys just kind of like, <sighs> yeah, that's their paradigm. Like, Who, who's got talent? Around. Ukraine. Oh, is, is that what your your parents yeah. watch, Patrick? They're Polish. <laughs> Polish? <laughs> well, I think that's kind of why we wanted to start the podcast up, right? Because we yeah. all know what it's like to talk about people you're surrounded with, maybe at school or at your day job. And it's a little bit strained to talk to them about mm. something you're into, be it because you over-explain it and it doesn't really click to them, yeah. or you're super into it and they're a super lackluster person and that puts them off. <laughs> right. um, yeah. I think it's cool to like bring people on here and we all collectively get this excitement going. Yeah. And then people yeah. who maybe normally wouldn't listen to this kind of music go, maybe there's something more to it. Maybe I should check that out. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, like, dude, this is like definitely the most comfortable and like welcoming like we've ever felt like... On like an like, we've not, I don't think we've ever been on a po- podcast, but just like ever. like the best like vibes right now. Like thanks, so thanks, much, y'all. Well, thank you. No, it's yeah. because of the couch. So uh, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think it was the jar exploding all over the floor. Yeah, yeah. 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 really good way to <laughs> this. Hey. The sign falls awesome back. Top, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. So I love it. <laughs> what what made you guys decide on the Seinfeld backdrop? Uh, uh, so we we were using this um, <laughs> photographer's backdrop, and it looked really like plain. It was just kind it of like looked a like we were in a crypt or in a dungeon. Yeah, it was just like a gray texture, and like it looked fine, Depressing, but I think. it <laughs> wasn't really the kind of flair that any of us really vibe with. Right. And then the other day, like um, it was Evan, yeah, for our our Christmas special, we put a crazy ass blizzard on the I green screen, one, yeah. and we thought that was really funny. So then the next week, we're like, well, we can't do the blizzard again, but maybe let's try to pick something in the same vein so we're just start googling stuff and uh ian or evan was like hey let's let's get the seinfeld backdrop so we looked through a couple and then we find this one where kramer's like he's he's laying out on the couch i mean like a kramer Uh, stands yeah so our couch is perfectly lined up (laughs) with (laughs) where kramer is right now yeah i feel like then it looks like the rest of the cast is just like looking over at us yeah they're just looking at us right now yeah (laughs) (laughs) like they're planning to do something yeah so, oh, what up, George? Yeah, <laughs> caress his head a little Jerry. bit. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> well, we're really glad that you guys are comfortable because that's yeah. something we we're kind of oh aiming for. We had like this table that's behind you. We we're we we're using that like for a couple weeks. Down here. Stiff. And yeah. it yeah, it's a little stiff and rigid, and it, it feels like you're at a business meeting or something. Yeah. And then with we the all went with the light hanging over and shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. See that. It's very business like. Yeah. yeah. We we all went. Well, what kind of business so when, what exactly do you do here? <laughs> yeah. oh. So basically what our format is, or what we're trying to do is we have a band on or a guest on, and then the following week, it's just going to be the three of us or the four of us just shooting the shit mm. kind of thing. Mm. Um, and then we're just going to alternate that. So a couple of weeks ago, we, we sat down on the couch and we're like, this is really comfy. And I feel <laughs> yeah. like it yeah, enhanced the conversation and just made us all much more... Yeah, relaxed yeah. for sure. Yeah, and we're like, well, let's just stick with this. And then when you guys were coming on, we're like, well, it's gonna be hard because we have to set up all these mics in a way that we've never done before. But let's just roll with it. Let's just see what happens. And as you guys saw when you're walking in, we're all kind of scrambling around, kicking over ragu jars, <laughs> trying to figure oh. out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pouring out ragu. That's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Sorry, know if, guys. I don't know if we ever finished talking about. Uh, the, the musical, musical journey. journey. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hop back to it? Do you want me to do you want me to hop sure, back yeah. on that? Yeah. Where were we? Really? <laughs> was, it was. It was with me. Okay. Oh yeah. Your current. So. Thing. Uh, so, I think this is even after like our first album. It was. It was when uh, I started getting. Uh, I wasn't. I, I stopped listening to artists so much as I was listening to producers uh, so I got heavy into Max Martin so that like opened up just the whole pop <laughs> world every, to me top yeah, yeah. Tracks oh my god for real yeah. and just yeah, yeah so was like, this after uh, as sprays. we both close this was, in on water this was after okay. yeah as we both yeah, yeah. and uh, so like Honeybee started with me like listening to so much Radiohead so much Max Martin and just like trying to become like trying to like 
evolve in a way I hadn't before. So like, cool. yeah, and like I was realizing like with like my current skill set, I I don't, I don't I think I just need, like needed to like practice more and like become a better singer. I just like found out and like discovered all the ways I needed to like improve and stuff. But in the meantime, I was like, you know, analyzing all these different kinds of production and like I think it, it definitely like that is really apparent on Honeybee that like it just like the kind of weird all the weirder shit that we did mm -hmm. and having john on it too our friend yeah. uh john horvath his uh moniker is sad sorcerer he like did all the production and mixed and stuff all on that record uh yeah and it was around the time i got into like r&b so like frank ocean uh Ariana Grande, Dan Caesar, Na Frank yeah, Ocean. We, we, we love Frank Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But now it's like a lot of uh, Marvin Gaye, a lot of like mm. older kind of soul, like how, what Ben was. Gil Scott Heron. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of him. Gil Scott Heron? No. Oh, yeah, you'll right. get to hear it on yeah. our intro. Hell yeah, hell yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that that's me now. Is like now that I've kind of discovered like the top echelon of like. V Vibe. vocalists I'm oh. like all right that's the bar and I'm like that's I'm like constantly pushing myself to like try and get close to that so it's like it's all R&B for me right now that's yeah. so cool do you like Elliot Coleman I haven't heard of El Elliot Coleman you'd like him it's yeah give me like yo for real give me a list of like all the stuff that you think I should listen to like especially like if I just say R&B and you're just like mm, 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 I'm Elliot like yo Coleman's give it to me for real no. well we songs, were we Elliot were talking about doing mm. like a an ape podcast like spotify playlist where like oh. we all kind of chuck some stuff into it and uh, yeah. uh be it weekly or monthly or quarterly or something mm -hmm. and then just toss it out to all our listeners if Fuck if yeah. they want to check it out because we we had um adam i know you know tyler ends he was on i love tyler yeah, Enns. tyler was on <laughs> as if well he was here yeah, yeah he, he was, was here he was, he was here. On come on tyler <laughs> Enns is here yo i think he's watching oh, right now so yeah. if you want to tyler, tyler. <laughs> god i miss you dude yeah but Holy. as as he was exchanging what he's been listening to and what he is listening to we started exchanging with him and he's yeah. like wow i've never heard of some of these artists and we hadn't heard of some of the stuff that he'd been yeah. listening to and it was like maybe we do have something here where we can we can kind of trade that back and forth in a, a little more scientific kind of way oh man how do you guys know tyler like i went to high school with tyler we he's always been show. oh, no, oh no. that's yeah. it yeah. like that he played at oh yeah. okay oh you guys organized like a show? Though someone else organized a show, and we like just drove you him met him. to like okay. No, because uh, we know I'll Tyler know. through um, like the uh, other members in the band that I'm in. They were, used to work with him, mm -hmm. or he used to work with them, and then that's just he started coming around, and that's pretty much oh, it. That's yeah. So tight. Sick. Yeah, went to high school, and he was always such a talented writer, and always yeah. like so good positive, with wordplay, good vibes. positive. Uh, oh, yeah. Hell yeah! Oh man, dude, I miss that boy. I, I saw him. Yeah, we, he came over uh, with. Uh, do you know Andrew Locke? Do you know Andrew at all? No, this is one of his no. best friends. Yeah, okay. so yeah, we, they both came over and we like they just like rapped on a couple of beats I made and stuff. That's great. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was lots of fun. It's good yeah, to I see was those boys, when he so. was here. I was told to bring up Andrew Locke, and he just went crazy, started uh, gushing for. He, he, <laughs> yeah, he could easily tell you eleven thousand stories. Yeah, about yeah, it was Andrew really Locke. funny. Yeah. All right, so what about you? Where where are you at right now? Ah, uh, where am I at right now? Um, hmm. In terms of like musical influences and stuff like that, and just no, what kind of kale are you eating? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. What, what kind of what, where are you at? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, I guess in terms of like musical influences for like this band, Sonic like, Aid. Yeah, no. Well, it doesn't necessarily have yeah. to be t <laughs> towards well, towards you know that, yeah. Bands or anything. Yeah, well, like stuff that like I listen to that I used to like kind of consider as like kind of primary influences for like the music we have written for the past releases i'd say it's been like like kind of on a spectrum from like such gold uh and then the other end of the spectrum being this ambient band called hammock where it's just like kind of just the craziest kind of hardcore punk kind of proggy riffs, stuff riffs, riffs. just riffs. yeah just the most insane riffs and then just like the most beautiful atmospheres you could ever imagine and then just trying to combine those together. Mm -hmm. um, but as of recently, I've just been listening to a lot of, like, Pat Metheny, who's, like, the best jazz fusion guitarist ever. Interesting. Let's check him out. Objectively. And then, like, Steely Dan. Mm -hmm. oh, just, yeah. like, yeah. just, like, jazz fusion stuff. It's, like, stuff that's kind of unrelated, but I'm excited to see where me just listening to that all the time 
takes my writing. <laughs> well, I think that's what's really cool about you guys. Like, I can hear pieces that are pulled from a lot of different areas into your music, where, where I know predominantly there is, like, the specific sound you tend to get in the Tri-Cities, be it thrashy or punky or... Trappy. Trappy. <laughs> you know? Trappy. And then, yeah, you guys were kind of like this... this really different breath of fresh air and i was like wow they're they're really like onto something here oh yeah. dude thank you Thanks, thank man. you hey no problem that means so much love so much i love the the, the tommy pictures oh, God, they're yeah. james pictures but yeah for yeah. for uh anybody who's curious there's a there's a tommy uh james franco dressed up as tommy wiseau on a poster over in the corner it's kind of terrifying. Lovely. I don't know Give where it came from. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. You guys love the room, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. The okay. Uh, a new way to experience the room, you can I, you can watch it on YouTube, right? But I, I think like watching it, watching the room half speed, is like watching <laughs> it for the first watching, time. Watching, watching anything half speed is the like funniest <laughs> shit. Yes, but you need to make sure you don't watch like the excruciating scenes half speed because then they're twice as long right <laughs> so like off. so like the three sex scenes Slowly you want to make PTSD. sure you, you just want to skip to the highlights and <laughs> the I, rose you yeah. rose. I did not hit her I did not, I did not. <laughs> it sounds like they're drunk the whole time <laughs> oh hi yeah. Mark yeah. Greg, Greg sounds so good half speed just like oh hey Johnny what's up <laughs> it's the best it's like someone dunked his head in water every time before he says a line. Yeah. Love that. So um, your your latest release is Honeybee, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I know you guys said it's your most vulnerable and intimate music that you've you've made. Um, why do you feel that way? Uh, I think Ben helped with he's helping with more lyrics now, but I think a lot of the lyrics reflected just like what I was going through like in that time. Uh, it was it was definitely like this like the hardest period of my sure. life like lowest I've been and a lot of songs like reflect that like uh, uh, there's a uh, songs about like uh, my relationship ending there's songs about my friend's alcohol addiction uh, me worrying that like my dad is that doesn't have like like, like he, my I shouldn't go into it but yeah <laughs> well but, yeah but it's like it, there's just a lot of songs that reflect like me being at my lowest point and yeah sure so, do you I, feel like with ben jumping in on the lyrics it like helped bring that out uh like, we, sorry we got, uh, new a, new, a new vibes or old or for that album for, for, for honeybee record. like we, for honeybee? we yeah we, we, we helped like Lord. to establish each other's like vibe very well i think like, ben's we, very we empathetic were, yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah yeah that's that's for sure right and like i mean we're we're just very we, we, we are we are two people who I think just love language so much mm -hmm. and like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big kind of lit nerd sort of guy right and so that's that's the sort of vibe I'd like to bring to it right and that's more of what we're especially more of what we're writing now stuff that's just very like poetic and sometimes very flowery like I'd like to bring sometimes a little more like kind of an of a of, of sort of an abrasive tone towards it and Adam is is very good at you know kind of helping find a good middle ground and rolling it back which is which translated really mm -hmm. well on the album and I think that's what made it so like vulnerably emotional uh, for like vulnerability musically when we were writing it a lot I found that like we had we, we, we had and even even in the lyric side sometimes we had parts because we were jumping in so much on it that some of them felt to me even in the end product a little bit to be not like a succinct point like very all over the place which i think lent itself really nicely to the musical part of that too because it can get really fucked and really all over the place like <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. if we're like if we're talking about like songs like nausicaa which like we we sort of we sort of kind of pushes like the single from that album a little bit and milo right uh, My, milo is a little bit more a little bit more straightforward driven but nausicaa like the end product some people say like it's very all over the place and i love hearing feedback like that because mm -hmm. That's good. It's it's good that we could make like a, a product that translated well, even though it was very a very wide range of dynamics for us all. Like we've got like we, we we've got like Adam belting out like like B flats and crazy shit like that. We got we we got we got <laughs> top bass of my solos. range exposed. <laughs> we, got, we got bass solos. We got Nathan going nuts on this trap ass B. Like it's it's crazy shit sometimes. Like when I look back at writing this album, I'm like holy shit, what what were we thinking? I'm so happy we were thinking that. Yeah, right? I, I, I love. love I love writing songs with you guys. I but one of my favorite songs. things like with with Ben is like sometimes I feel like Ben is like just like an animal in a cage and I'm like writing a song and I'm just like 
Dan, do you want to go? And Beth just like comes out, wipes his dick on the song. Oh, in, the best, in the best way. Dang, I don't know what kind I'm of animal you are, Ben. I'm like, I'm like a horse uh, in a stall just breeding songs. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Jesus. You, horse. Jesus. Okay. I know you guys, disgusting people. I know why he said horse. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys find that like when you're when you wrote this, um, there was a lot of like going back and like changing a lot of stuff, or did you kind of commit to the writing decisions and then uh. it was more <laughs> it was more in post that it was like the 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 like when you guys were starting to produce it and record it, that's where kind of more of the other ideas came about. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, to- yeah like yeah, that's really yeah, that's that's really insightful. Yeah, I love uh, I lo- like demoing and pu- pre production is really important. Uh, I think like even like after pre-production you can have like uh, like so many thoughts and like yeah, yeah. i re-recorded vocals on a couple a uh, couple songs more than once adding like like ooze and stuff or like oh i actually sorry guys decided i don't like that chorus i'm going to change it and like yeah that, that stuff can be a little like kind of disappointing sometimes R- riley's often like what's wrong with it why do you have to change that <laughs> and i and i can't explain myself i can't explain why other than like it can be better but uh yeah yeah i, I think like uh, like you were saying like how you got, y'all were saying and ben was saying like sometimes some songs can sound all over the place in a good way and it's it's only because just like when i'm writing tunes it, the track has to in its entirety at, at every moment be able to please my ADD brain and and like the, it, it, the result is definitely a, a sound that can like it, it, it's I feel, I feel like it, c- it can never not be boring for me it has to always be exciting and it has to always like even on your like 10th 20th 30th lesson be like oh like not expecting yeah there's a little surprises that yeah, so, it, yeah. Has a, it has like re-listen value yeah, yeah. I, th- I think That's like important an important me. characteristic of it though is that like on one end like you want it to be like consistently like kind of like something new every like five seconds like kind of like c- kind of just like very kind of you know stimulating all the stimulating time. all the time yeah. but then there's like the other side of like i don't know saying like i don't know maybe like in an instance me saying like okay this needs to like function as like a whole song still like how, how are we gonna make this still work yeah yeah sometimes you go down you chase and, the, and your own like, tail trying to make a sick part yeah and it kind of takes but, it away from the song but but in, yeah. in the end we're all still wanting it all the, all our songs to just be like cohesive but interesting pieces of music so like whenever like there's any kind of like kind of disagreement or anything Friction. like that we have that we have the same kind of goal so it mm. always kind of works out in the end cool. which is why it's kind of good that we're writing songs together yeah <laughs> i love the uh like i think from as we both to honeybee the songs were written instrumental first and then we'd throw vocals on it and it made for some like a lot of like interesting parts but i think now uh i think I'd say like 75% of the stuff we've written, it has been uh, vocals and like song structure first, and then we're like adding more production and instrumental. uh, And like that is, that that, that has changed up like our sound a lot. And uh, it's, the result is more cohesion. Is that a word? Yeah. Yeah. More cohesion and uh, uh, catchier songs. Yeah. So I think uh, the, this like the record that we're we're we're, we're writing right now is uh, i think it's going to be like just so objectively our best like uh, like I, I want i like the goal is to make everyone forget about our uh, like our catalog and <laughs> oh, then just be like okay. this is like I, I just want people to be like this is the best album like ever i mean that's like that's if, that's the bar i've set for myself <laughs> if honeybee was merely a stepping stone for you guys yeah that is wild to me cuz yeah. going from your first record which I said, like, really caught my ear, caught my attention, sounded really nice. Then I listened to Honey Bee, and one of your first lines that comes in, talking about your father, it's kind of like a kick to the chest. You're like, oh, we're going here. Like, yeah. this is deep now. And then yeah. the instrumentation comes in, and it's got a lot of texture and vibrance and color to it. And you're like, whoa, the instruments are on the same level as the lyricism. Like, whoa, that's fucking yeah. wild. Dude. Yeah. And, well, thank you. yeah, like like you guys said, like, it... it pulls apart and then comes back together and it pulls apart and it slams back yeah. together and it really treats your ear to like a fun experience yeah the Dude. harmonic use of like tension and release is like yeah and just like you 
just like you, I get really bored of music <laughs> that doesn't yeah. fill every pocket perfectly. I don't know what it is about my brain, but like if there's a moment where the tension is released for just too long, I'll shut the song off and yeah. I'll never go back to it. Like it has to keep my attention that whole entire time. You guys do a uh, sick job of pulling yeah. that off. I'm, I'm the Thank same you. way. Thank like you. I can't like, especially with my own song, I can't like take myself out of it. You know, sure. I have to be fully invested like all the time. So that's like that needs so much coming yeah. from you. It, you're you're really like well spoken about this stuff. So, like, <laughs> yeah. So mad, mad respect. Well, to yeah, you. we're we're just a couple fucking losers that can only talk about music and make yeah. music. We don't know anything else. <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. So do you guys find that when you release like with you know Honeybee being released, you listen back and you're like, oh, I could have uh, just if I had maybe a little bit more time, <sighs> I could have you know. Oh, yeah. Or do yeah. you find that the 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 commitments that you made with the goals that you were all trying to collectively reached was like satisfactory even with so many listens or is it like yes or both. is the things that you're kind of looking for that you're kind of nitpicking about like overly nitpicky that you're like only i really want that change like everybody else is kind of yes to all uh, yes yeah. right. yes yeah. Yeah. i think, I think yeah. certainly i think certainly riley can comment a lot on about like the, the kind of time crunch that was part of the influence of this album too because i mean he was you're, I, you you usually have like kind of the most contact with uh, the management we were working with at the time right who was i mean as management should right kind of putting on us on a very a very close to the heart time budget right mm-hmm. deadline and, uh, and so and so that that kind of that kind of ended up like needing some decisions to be made and we were working with a great producer like john mm-hmm. like like john like we can give him kind of a general idea to go on and he will work with us he's he's amazing like that like i think I, th- I think my bass has sounded the best on the record that John produced than it has on, on anything that we've recorded pretty much ever, which is cool. And I think we all did sound really good on that mm-hmm. record, the best out of anything we've recorded ever so far. Uh, but uh, but yeah, there I, I would have loved time to do that, right? And I think I think we would have loved time to explore like what more could have been done within that too, right? There's little parts where I think like we're we're still we're still writing and that's where we get more opportunities to explore those uh for stuff in our live performance right because i mean that's that's more something that's yeah. separate to the album right? we yeah we, to, we there's yeah. there's well def- said, yeah yeah there's definitely some stuff where like we find we'll like write and record and release songs and then we'll play them for like a year and then they'll sound like the feel will be completely different yeah just because mm-hmm. we haven't yeah. sat on them long enough so that that's kind of one of our collective goals with all of the songs we're writing now is to like make sure we're sitting on them long enough so we can like fully kind of understand how they can be realized. Got to yeah. let it ferment a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. I, I definitely feel that. Yeah. There's too many times when like I'll have a spark of an idea and I try to put so much into it right off the bat instead of like fleshing it out over a longer period of time. And, like, I know that the end product could have been way better, but I can't bring myself to work on it anymore just because I put so much into that, like, initial burst that I'm just mm. sick of it. Right. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's tough to keep that momentum going and keep it, like, being a consistent thing all the way through. And, and that that's that, that's what's so magical about, like, just kind of making an album, leaving it there, letting it do its thing, letting it, like, ferment, right? Letting it, letting it become a nice fine wine, right? And then you... Then you can kind of then you kind of take some liberties with it. And those are things that keep us wanting to like play live because that's more where we. Because like if we look at it, like I mean even um off of like as we both close in on the water um, uh when when we play uh when, when we when we play songs off that now they are, are so different uh, mm. from from how we've recorded mm. them too right which is which is fun right if people want that experience they can listen to the album right like they can kind of see how it's developed from there and we can see how it's developed from there it's like it's, really cool. it's always it's still stimulating to play like our older songs i think because of that too we gotta yeah. we gotta keep it fresh. yeah it's fun like bad clover we've mm-hmm. opened with for a long time uh, it's just like like it's so it's so it's just like completely it's the beginning's very gazy and and uh uh, well, I guess like the meat and potatoes of the song is pretty pretty much the same, but I guess the ending. Yeah, go ahead. You have something to say. No, go go go. <laughs> you're just like, feeling my body. You're, you're feeling my energy. Just feeling my energy. Yeah, my. Uh, I I'm I'm done. Go for it. Oh, I was just gonna say when you're playing live. Um, and you make those decisions where you kind of like sauce up the song to a point yeah, where yeah. it's like a little bit different. Do you find that you like? Do you guys either 
talk about that after the show where you're like, oh yeah, I kind of felt that, like the crowd would like that part, or do you kind of like just make the decisions on your own as you play and then it just becomes, Ooh. you know what I mean? Because like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that question. Sometimes pre-meditated, uh, like, yeah. we, like we'll be jamming and be like, oh, I like that. And I'm just going to do that. But then, yeah, I, I think there's a, a lot of uh, things that I do live consistently that were just like done in the moment. Like it'd be mm-hmm. like, just like really stoned, like, like, like playing live and then just like doing something because I think Haha, this wouldn't it be funny if I did this <laughs> and it ends up sounding sick yeah. And, yeah and I just keep doing there's, it there's a lot of stuff too where it's just kind of unspoken and it's just from the it's just the product of us playing it over and over again mm-hmm. it just kind of gradually turns into something else yeah mm-hmm. and, that, and that's how a lot of like the kind of feel of a song will change or something from the recording it's just us playing it over and over again live after we've like released it or something. I think as a listener going to see a live performance of a band that you've probably listened to their record over and over and over again, you have it memorized just as well as they do, and you go to see them and they start doing some improvisation on stage mm-hmm. and like really changing it up, that's when it blows your mind and you're like, holy shit, like it's a totally different experience. Now I've went to see bands that do like cookie cutter of how yeah, the album's like played, verbatim. and I'm like, yeah. wow, yeah. they nailed it, but yeah. okay, you yeah, know? True. Yeah, you're like, that was really cool. Like, when we went to go see uh, The Contortionist yeah, what are you getting in Toronto, exactly. um, you probably didn't know because you didn't listen to much of their stuff before, but when The Contortionist played, and they, they're they such a vibey band that they changed up so many parts, and it was just really surprising, and it made me appreciate, like, how they communicate with each other as a band like in the moment which I think is like kind of an important thing because like you can be a band that like you know nowadays with the internet like bands can each member can be like at you know different corners of the world and then they can you know meet up and rehearse for a week before tour and they can fucking nail it but I feel like there's a difference because you can really tell when there's like an energy in the Mm. band Mm. that they communicate really well like on stage and off the stage Mm. and I think that kind of like adds a special kind of uh as the French call certain, I don't know what to the uh, like, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Je ne sais quoi. I think the first instance, the, joke. Uh, the, the, fir- <laughs> yeah. the first instance of like uh, feeding off someone's energy and like creating those like moments was definitely like Bad Clover with like mm-hmm. because the 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 track is like it, it's just kind of a, a brontosaurus like. It, level in energy <laughs> just kind of it's like so, it's yeah. like a two minute song in like a you know what I'm talking about yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah brontosaurus yeah. energy is crazy yeah, okay. and then <laughs> brontosaurus energy big yeah. brontosaurus energy uh yeah oh and, my god. and then like I'm, I, I'm almost done this thought I swear to god yeah so like so like <laughs> at the end that. thanks but thanks baby yeah I think it was uh Nathan like improvising over like mm-hmm. that section and then just like it changed what everyone was doing and like that that's happened a lot throughout yeah, uh, that, we've been Bad Clover's either. like a two minute song, but it's like a th- <laughs> seven minute track. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's really cool because I guess, like, a- as a listener, you sometimes, like, when you you see that going on on stage and you feel that energy, the band is feeling that, like, tenfold, I'm yeah. sure. Because they're looking at, like, they, they're that seeing my that fucking have, face. But also, times how many people are in the crowd also reacting, so that, like, inward energy kind of gets brought in like a crazy amount right Mm, all right so we're coming up on an hour we're gonna take a quick little bathroom break sandwich break whatever you you gotta do (laughs) ragu break uh so yeah we'll be back in like five minutes or so beautiful hell yeah how many shout outs hey Hey. what's up welcome back to the ape audio podcast we're sitting down with romancer um so i just want to remind everybody that this episode is brought to you by glue apron uh, you've heard of Blue Apron before. Fresh produce, fresh meats delivered right to your front door. This is nothing like that. This is an apron covered in glue. Um, you, you don't have to tie it up. You don't have to worry about that. It's totally hands-free. You just slap it slap it right on the front of your body. Glue Apron. Thank you. <laughs> I also want to give a quick shout-out to uh, the McCoys. The, yeah. the Norman Thunderpaws, I think, is one. The Norman want. Thunderpaws. Shout-out to, shout shout out. Out to the cat. Hashtag Normie has friends. Smash that like button. <laughs> Fist it. F- Fist the bell. Oh, yeah. Fist that <laughs> bell. Fist uh, it. Shout out to Caleb. Mm. What's poppin' Caleb Church out? Caleb! What up, Caleb? Yo, Tyler, what's up, guy? Hey, hey, Tyler. Hi, Mom. Hey, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> That's my real voice. Hey, Tyler. <laughs> okay, so okay, um, guy. before the break, we were talking about what? I, I don't know. 
<laughs> what yeah, upsets, some shit. What upsets know. you at IKEA? I, I think we were talking about like honey, how Honeybee was a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we're just gonna let that one go for a bit. <laughs> what, what upsets you guys at IKEA? You go around, try all pronounce these words, and it's 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 really it can be really trying on somebody. Just I'll I'll say that much. Their meatballs are overrated. Me yeah, the I veggie really ones suck. I love okay, all of it. Yeah, every, I don't think I really like IKEA. Yo, the I've veggie meatballs. I love the way oh. their little um, when I was a kid. demo rooms remember. are set oh, up, and man. I go, wow, this is how people live. Yeah. And then I just go home to my. Who shoes. lives like this? <laughs> 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 yeah. It's so hard to navigate in that store. It they got the arrows on the ground yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah, but like those arrows don't lead you anywhere. You keep following Yo, them. The arrows are all the same. Like, like, <laughs> like in the basement, it's like all this like fucked up warehouse. Like you just went through like paradise for like two hours, and then it's like, oh, now you're down here with all the normies. <laughs> it's the best part. <laughs> I, I like their blueberry cheesecake that I had that one time. That sounds amazing. And then uh, there's just like there's slices of pizza on your way out. Swedish like, meatballs. Really good. They're overrated. The meatballs, I think they are yeah. overrated. They are. They're good, but they're overrated. But they yeah. tr- they're doing their best. They're mm. trying. They like a- I think they're made out of horse. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> sorry. Um. So you guys put out a video recently. I think. Oh, yeah. What was that? A month? Did, uh, month ago? Two months? Uh. Yeah. Like a, a month ago. Super oh, trippy. And that was for your song, Milo. Milo and, and Pink Regret. Pink Regret. Milo and Pink Regret. Yeah. Cool. And you, you, um, you got iced out visuals and Mercedes Arnhorn yeah. to uh, do that yeah. video with yeah. you guys. We so did. like, I was really interested. Like, what was the aesthetic and the vibe and the feel for the video that you you guys were kind of after? Was there like a concept or anything, yeah. or were you uh, just like, let's get some lights and some fog and let's just do it? I think initially that mo- more of like, what, yeah, the latter there. I think uh, the main inspiration for the video was me falling asleep to like my VHS tapes every night mm-hmm. uh so i i have I, I amassed like golden age disney and like disney renaissance like perfect collection uh minus treasure planet so that, that, that's def- very sought after in my collection i really want have you seen treasure planet 2002 i feel so like good. burger king gave me a toy for treasure planet oh, and i was like if burger king's <laughs> tossing out these toys i'm not watching yeah, it sure wasn't. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a like very like space pirate vibes yeah it's, it's right. cool yeah the, the, oh the, yeah they're fl- they're flying around the boats with the golden sails right yeah. that's treasure planet yeah. right he, he's got like this wind surf yeah that's right. like that's jet right. Yeah. thing and it's you super dope it. yeah. uh yeah so it was falling asleep to those all the time just like i couldn't get over the uh i couldn't get over just like the visuals and just so we we uh sage and i went to uh the waterloo public library and we uh Sorry, it's a little... Sorry, I have, like, really bad ADD. Do you mind turning it down a little bit? Yeah. Else I'm never going to be able to finish my As someone with extremely bad ADD? Yeah. I got you. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, basically... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, for you. Fuck it. The second, like, any music comes on, it's just like... <laughs> yeah. Inside his brain. It's really bad. That's so crazy. Yeah. So, uh, we went to the li- library, and they had this... Uh, VHS to media converter so it was as easy as like hitting the record button on the the hardware cool. and like playing the video and like it would just record you, you could record fast forward and reverse and like once we knew that we could do that that opened up so many like ideas and doors because like so many dip, it's like I feel like a lot of the scenes we liked were good they were like, oh, this is this is okay. Like it, it, it's it's all very warm, but I wish we could get to some parts faster. So we would fast forward and we'd get to all the cool parts and have the like the grainy kind of like cool. fast forwarding lines. And you can see that on a, on a, a lot of the shots, like that. Like that's really fast. Mm-hmm. So yeah. not only do you need your music to entertain oh. your brain constantly, you need the video too as mm. well. Is that what yeah. you said? You had to speed sure, up to yeah. the parts that were, <laughs> were really busy, had a lot of action going yeah. on. Yeah. I yeah. think I think like one of the notes like we made for it was like we we would like something that's like very like Malcolm in the Middle theme songy. I'm not I'm not sure if maybe that was just like one of my notes. And I think I, I, think, <laughs> I think I think they turned it right. I think they turned it right the fuck out. Like they really they really did great on this. It was really cool like being able to kind of trust uh, uh, Mercedes and trust uh, trust Jakey from Iced Out Visuals mm-hmm. uh, with, with with the end product here, and they they created us some really really special and something really cool I'm, yeah i'm very i'm very happy with it's like with how su- it turned super out yeah. underrated just yeah like definitely. Video yeah, yeah. The yeah visuals are like they're just yeah they're 
really intricate when you yeah like that kind of stuff like the trail yeah, like motion you, you don't oh, yeah. get color local video smoke. producers who yeah. can do yeah. stuff like this no it's just no, amazing it's super lot, cool no. yeah i could list off everything like we sampled uh there's like a shot from my fair lady like the be- beginning where it's all flowers there's a, a dumbo when dumbo's having the crazy dream uh that's fantasia lots of fantasia disney please don't sue us um, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's it's, it's what about the, uh, nobody will know. We're not playing yeah. the video. If we played like the, you know what the I mean? Video, yeah. Played it like have that. That would yeah. be. Yeah. But since it's like projected on us, it, we're using it in a different way. Mm-hmm. What about the uh, credits cool. that were over? Oh, uh, that is a. Uh, oh, what credits is that? I think that's Fantasia credits. That's yeah, really cool. That's though. gotta be. I yeah. love that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. That was like last minute. Like. That's a really it, cool. It, it, it didn't have our. Uh, didn't have like our faces like animated in like that. But, but I love the shot of. Was yeah, it just, it like, overexposure, and then they just mm-hmm. fucked around with the I, th- I think, like, uh, Jacob yeah. of, like, I, I Stop Visuals, he's, I think a lot of the stuff, like, with, uh, like, anima- animation on our face and stuff, that was mm-hmm. all frame by frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I need to have him confirm that, but I know for the, uh, for, like, the rainbow-ness on my face, that was, that, that was all frame by frame. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. It's definitely, like, one of the, like, so proud of it. Yeah, one hundred percent. And like, couldn't have had like. I'm so glad I got to do it with our friends, Sades and Jacob too. Yeah, I, I awesome. wanted to ask like, what what exactly like I I've seen Jacob's work around a little bit, mm-hmm. and it, he's kind of been popping off this year yeah. or uh, late last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope he stays popping off. Man. He's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's a great he's a great fucking yeah. video. Yeah, producer. for sure. Yeah. It definitely oh, yeah. shows. And yeah. I wanted to ask like, what exactly did Jacob bring to the table for you guys that made you want to come back to him? Because mm-hmm. I think he did your first video as well, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what made you want to come back to him? And then. Um, what did Mercedes bring to the mm-hmm. table for you guys? Uh, Jacob is just super talented. Uh, I've, I've known both uh, him and Mercedes for like eight, nine years. So like Jacob, since he was, uh, now he's Jacob Kalo Lees, but he used to be Jacob Kalo Lees. It was like, like, I think he's born in like, I think he's born in 1998. So like, uh, so like eight. Is that what happens like uh, after you yeah. come out of a hyperbolic time chamber? <laughs> That's how you transform. So he wasn't granted the rank he, of uh, Jedi Master. No, he was very he was very young when when I met him. But we okay. just got to watch him like just work on his craft for so long. He's just been killing it. He he uh, does he uh, films, edits, uh, and like directs videos full time. He doesn't have another job, and he's just like one of the most talented people I know. He's I I don't know if he truly understands like his worth as like a, like a cinematographer like video editor but kid is just so talented so obviously we're gonna want to like you know like collaborate with him again and he's yeah. got so many ideas uh Mer- mercedes hasn't like this like working like with like us on like romancer videos at this it's her first taste of like um like uh directing mm-hmm. and she and uh having like been kind of like watching she, she, she's getting more into like visuals and stuff and just like we, we've grown up together like watching like it's like six scary movies like one of our favorites is Suspiria uh, the Dario Argento like 1970s film and just like that that's I think that is like a source of like a lot of like inspiration just for, for visuals uh, yeah like the 80s like uh, tape saturation and whatnot uh yeah. mandy is another good film that came out recently it's that it's, it's starring, nick cage sorry nick, nick cage, cage. B- best I, I i'm just gonna come out and say a best nick cage movie ever. really yeah. i've had it bold. sitting Very in my bold. library ready to be watched for yeah. so long but i'm waiting to be in like the perfect mood to want to yeah. watch it yeah. like i gotta be feeling a little spooky <laughs> a little weird a little like a VHS tape. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And like, I keep sitting down with my girlfriend. And we're like, hey, we're going to watch it tonight. And then like, I eat some ice cream. I'm like, no, not, I can't eat ice cream and then watch this. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like trying just to cultivate this perfect, perfect neck to watch this movie. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I'm glad to hear that it's really good. Yeah. Sage yeah. is working with us on another video right now. Cool. And it's just, uh, we filmed it all on this old like 480p Panasonic DVD quality camera. And, uh, yeah, our tour with Silver Age, we got a lot of footage for it. I uh, got a lot of footage in the summer. It's going to be, like, very, like, nostalgic vibe, and we're just kind of, like, piecing it together cool. right now. Do you have a song that is going It'll to be it? for stop motion. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. What was really cool about working with them was like the level of like like legitimacy and organization that they both bring to it collectively because I mean we'd never worked with something that was like okay yeah we're gonna have like a storyboard and we're gonna like set up shots and we're gonna we're, we're gonna bring like this equipment to this certain shooting day and uh, you know we're, we're gonna and, and the, the creative and productive choices they were able to kind of make on the fly too translated super well right it was it, mm. it felt very it felt very much like we were a part of the art of film rather than just like you know kind of shooting a music video where it's just sort of like kind of kind of kind of free vibe kind of just yeah. you know feel it out see see what looks good see what comes out good just play for a few hours see what happens right and uh and, and not not that that's how the first video was the first video was i uh, not, not not a little less organized it was just a lot a, a lot a lot more set up and a lot more kind of single just driven shots like in that one room in uh, in the vineyard it was all shot in one day it was yeah. milo was shot over the course of three, three yeah three right days. And that yeah. was that was for nausicaa Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nausicaa, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Was there anything that you guys had learned from like filming that that you wanted to apply to like the the new video? Uh, like Milo being the new video. Yeah, mm. yeah, more variety, like more like more A roll, <clears throat> more B roll. Sure. So like I feel like with Nausicaa, it was just kind of like two, two or three kinds of shots, whereas like Milo has like so many different like. I feel like there's yeah, like I said, like more variety. Sure, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Now, it's like where we got a taste of like Jakey's Jakey's incredible ability for effects, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, like that show is obviously like more the more the rap and hip hop videos he produces in town too. Um, but then he kind of applied that same stuff to us and like kind of got us more where we were feeling and made some really cool creative choice. I'm, I'm really happy with how Nasika turned out, but it is much more of like a a direct kind of like like singularly focused video rather than rather rather than Milo and Pink Regret, which is more more more, more kind of story ish or at least more more dynamic, right? Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I think the first video that I saw by Jacob was a video that he did for Courage My Love. Mm-hmm. And oh, wow. it like caught my attention was right it, away. Was it an older one or is it a newer one? I wanna say it's a newer one. Maybe it came out around like sometime during the summer. <laughs> yep. Um, so it would have been tough love then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I watched that, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And then they tossed out a shout-out to Iced Out Visuals. I'm like, i got to check this out. Yeah. Oh, it's a local guy. Yeah. Holy shit. This dude has a lot of talent, but, like, it doesn't seem like he has a huge, like, presence online yeah. yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really cool that you guys are working with him mm-hmm. as well. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's, like, so slept on. I don't understand, like, how, like, people aren't, like, like, how, like... In, in our scene because yeah. it's all rap videos for him right now yeah, right? yeah. but yeah. just like you guys you're able to pull elements from different music into your music a videographer and a director should be able to or clearly he can mm-hmm. pull elements from the different styles of videos that he does and then plunk them onto you guys and it it is a quality product still yeah mm-hmm. um i feel like maybe if he was to pair up with the right person he could really explode the business yeah. you know he's trying to make yeah. viral videos right now yeah that's his, that's his goal right now is he just like open to like any kind of people to make content with or is he just kind of like oh uh, like you know i want the specific thing he, he uh I, I mean i'm not sure if he's like trying to collaborate with like non like doing like non-musical stuff yeah but yeah it'd be like it, it's more like he's trying to have his effects and like the video be the Okay. Like that, that, it definitely has yeah, that his like, like he has push. his signature yeah, yeah. on it. Oh, you yeah. watch it. To help the right you watch any of his itself. videos and you gotcha. know that it's him that yeah. made it. Just like yeah. um I guess like when you hop onto Instagram and you see any of these really like popular photographers like y- you can kind of pick out which images are produced by them or like a famous illustrator you can pick out which images are done by them. Mm, yeah. And he's doing that with music videos which is super cool and not something that always shines through, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. That, that, that fingerprint, that yeah. footprint. Yeah. His little trademark is really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There it is. So you guys, I think, just over the weekend, played a show with Exalt? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that was <laughs> Tell great. us about it. How was it? <laughs> it, was so it was agreeable, it was co-worker. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am Funny. glad we had this conversation. This has been fun and professional. Yes. <laughs> Hugs must, that are appropriate for the workplace. I work must place. go now. <laughs> <laughs> I only Exalt's like you as a <laughs> Exalt's always been a band that we just like <clears throat> respect so much. Yes. They're so cool. They've always been grinding it out on the local scene. Oh, yeah. Like even oh. since the 
Structure quote unquote days. scene mm-hmm. days. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. you know, like just seeing them kind of a slightly different lineup and just cranking it out into the point where they are now, yeah. like with Hope Fest, you know. Yeah. They, so they, how was that show? Yeah. Like, stupid cool. So sad. Yeah. It's it's always like kind of like nerve wracking, like, okay, we're kind of the completely different band that's being put on this bill, like, wonder how we're going to be received. But when we like at least when I was kind of joining the band we mostly just played kind of mm-hmm. hardcore shows mm-hmm. um I feel that so playing this kind of show it kind of like at least brought me back to like those kinds of shows where it's like okay like we we're we're obviously different but we can still like kind of provide a similar sort of energy and mm-hmm. it can still be appreciated luckily um so that that's kind of the vibe I got from that show is that obviously yeah. it was a hardcore show and we were the different band but mm. you're embracing it, being the sore thumb mm-hmm. yeah, yeah but it cool. but it we still felt welcomed <clears throat> yeah definitely yeah. Yeah. well we had oh, talked yeah. we, about we this with um, yeah. Sam Hillifer mm. of Sundiver when he he was on the show um, saying how the scene is kind of breaking away from just having a strictly hardcore bill yeah. and starting to mix in different artists mm-hmm. and how people are more accepting of that mm-hmm. i feel like maybe eight nine years ago i've definitely been to a show where a band like you guys might have come on stage and i would get the fuck out of here <laughs> this is bullshit yeah. blah 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 like Remember we're just we're shit, just here yeah. to get wasted and fucking mosh or like whatever but yeah. <laughs> people are just talking their genres i think definitely yeah. nobody yeah. wanted yeah. to People are also out. younger, right? So yeah. it's kind of like oh, yeah. they're more committed to their yeah. what they like. And and I had said that I I feel like having so much music readily at your fingertips has kind of opened people up to expanding out of that genre. It wasn't like you had your CDs and then you had to go pay like 12, 15, 20 bucks to go pick up something else. Obviously, you're going to mm-hmm. stick with right. what you knew yeah. when, when you were dropping that kind of cash yeah. but now you can pay like eight bucks and just have an unlimited amount too much music too much yeah, music too much. and it gets curated to you so Ugh. it like the the services are kind of forcing you to listen to other stuff and bride near horizon horizon like for you horizon horizon i try and stay away from like the the, the playlists yeah like, i i feel like it, this is just me. I definitely know, like, like you, you guys know, like, if you're a movie buff or, like, TV buff, you'll never watch everything you want to watch. Right. When that, you'd just be like, damn, like, I got too much to do. I have work. I have, like, friends. I can't, like, watch all these TV shows. Uh, and, like, I, th- I feel like the same way with music. And, like, there is going to be, like, there's lots of new music, but there's just, like, so much old music that I want to digest right now. Yeah. And, 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 and so it's always, like, like music's very much, like, homework for me. I'm constantly, like... Mm-hmm. You're, like, yeah. you're an active listener. You kind of study it. Yeah. Okay, now let me flip that on you a bit. So what was, since you're kind of straying away from recommendations, what was the best thing that you still listen to to this day that was from a recommendation? Can oh, I, w- I will say online because just so it's like more robotic, yeah. like a more robotic recommendation. But like, is there something maybe in the last like I don't know, like couple oh, of years geez. that like either it be like a YouTube recommended Spotify or whatever your streaming platform is, okay. and they kind of you know you're like oh, and you like we're willing to show people that artist, and it was kind of you know out of yeah. that. Oh man. I wish I, like I wish there was any band that was coming to or any artist that was coming to mind. Right so now. the robots yeah, like, uh, are still failing. <laughs> yeah, ro- ro- AI robots haven't been very helpful Inferior. to me. Yeah. 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 The oh, drummer but, from Structures, rec- uh, he's put out Cloud Kicker. I had never heard yeah. of him, and I was like, oh, that's a cool name. You know, let yourself be huge. Just good message. Clicked it. Mm-hmm. Fell that was up. it down it's the rabbit hole. So I never, I never, and it was weird because you guys are a post rock band. I never really got into post rock. Didn't really come across it, and that was the first time. And ever since then, it's just like, oh god, this is when you want to get in the feelings and like, not like in your feelings like Drake kind of thing, but when you actually <laughs> want to feel everything, that's the best kind of music. Yeah. In my Drake opinion. wanted to feel everything with that seventeen year old. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, All oh, right, yeah. so I basically have like two two other questions <laughs> to get to, and then I know you guys have yeah. received some questions in on yeah. Instagram. If you want to get into those after, I, um, I could say one more thing about the Exalt show if you want. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so our paradigm of being like the sore thumb at the at an Exalt show was uh, we saw. Exalt, like Exalt's so cool that they w- would want to have a mix bill and like they understand that they have like 
control over who could be on the show. So they invited like uh, one of their friends, I think Nicole Dollenganger. She's amazing. Love her music. Uh, I think just it might have just been the people that were at the show. Uh, but like she was getting like talked over. Her music's very quiet, yeah. very like this, qui- this very was vibey. Their, this was their album release show. Yes. Yeah, no, not that. And uh, oh, sure. man. and it was just like I, I felt so bad for for like I imagine that'd be really distracting. You're trying to you know express yourself, and there's just everyone in the room is talking sure. over you. There's obviously people listening, but it was it was just a bummer that like just so many people talking. So we were concerned going <laughs> into the show that like during our loud parts would be fine but then we'd get to the part where we need to like focus and have it chill out and just like I wouldn't be able to focus on singing and I'd have to like half sing and listen to every what you, you know like earlier like I couldn't yeah, talk because the music was on like it's like that if people are talking it, like while I'm singing I, it, it absolutely affects like yeah, singing definitely. and I so totally like get that. but dead silence mm-hmm. just I, it was I, and that was that was the best feeling ever. Sure. Being in, being playing a show where, like, it was so likely that people were going to talk over us, and no one. And did. then everyone was just fixated yeah. on you yeah. guys. And it was just like, wow. Yeah, actually, yeah that feeling, attention span. That's yeah, really cool to receive yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I think like Exalt kind of relates to like bands like that on that level too, because I mean, obviously they're not, they're not like just a conventional a beat down like hardcore band. Like they, they create like a, a very atmospheric, a very like dark kind of foggy brooding yeah. like kind of kind of holy yeah. moment sort of thing right it's very it, it's it, it's it's always been admirable what they do and they've been doing that since day one and they have they have they have mm-hmm. yet to i i think i've yet to see them like on a bill that they just like fit in with but they're always the highlight of the event for me like yeah shout out exalt they're they're yeah. fucking great they're gonna yeah. they're gonna keep on keeping on I yeah them. every time i've seen yeah. those dudes the power level is just through the Oof, roof yeah, Oof, yeah. <laughs> it's great. yeah. yeah. gotta bring my scouter yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah. so I'm kind of going to roll it back to, uh, you guys came back from your American tour and you landed in Hope Fest. Mm. I want to talk about Hope Fest a little bit. It's something that we all think is really dope. Want to see it stick around. Want to see it come back. Corey Phoenix. Um, yeah. I'm kind of interested to see your perspective on it. <laughs> how, how, how was, how was it handled? How was it managed? How was it, uh, um, put to public attention did you guys find that to be like pretty adequate yeah, yeah. oh my god yes. we had yeah. like amazing turnout yeah yeah it was catered yeah. super good cool. like, I'm, yeah. like, what kind of snackies <laughs> uh, there like, was like, Mexican food there was like guacamole rice it was a taco farm yep. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, right right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh like, damn that's awesome yeah, yeah. Uh, and like security weren't my fave okay you know, they like, give you a hard time or what <laughs> it's it's maxwell's security you've got your real gems in the situation you got your real uh real yes. your real lumps in the Toe situation heads? you know uh, you know, you yeah. know you know the type coals name, yeah you got your real <laughs> coals yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah no i think like kyle Wappler's decision to take a more local approach with hope fest as opposed to like rebirthing what Koi Koi Fest Fest. once was Mm -hmm. was a very smart decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because like it it really needed a grassroots rebirth Mm -hmm. where it kind of needed to start all over again to like how it once was from the first year. Yeah, Yeah, you make and I think that's why it was so successful this past year. So do you think that with that being said, of him trying to start it off and trying to plant a huge local seed? Let's just say, um, do you think that um, that is a good starting point to then kind of branch outward, or do you feel like it should kind of stay within like the Southern Ontario kind of framework? Because remember, with Koi, it yeah. started off as that, and then kind of grew into a more um, like mainstream thing, and that kind of I know yeah. there was other things kind of behind the scenes that kind of uh, made it come to a close, but yeah, it's 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 probably pattern, like too early to say at this point like at this point right. i think it should probably stay local yeah. like yeah just because like it's been the first kind of year of the rebirth and like i don't know festivals like koi fest and scene fest and stuff like that they always started off and became known as strictly local festivals yeah and that's kind of what made them so renowned and like kind of grounded and like have a solid foundation for people to come back yeah. next mm-hmm. year but how do you feel about something like Koi Fest in that kind of time where remember like every time I die I played where it was like there was a lot of local stuff and they were playing in all those venues mm-hmm. yeah. and then they kind of had a main stage like how yeah. do you kind of feel about that kind yeah. of vibe where that they, was exciting I mean, like, it was great yeah. it was yeah. almost like the majority was local 
but your headliners were like some people would pay to see those just for those headliners yeah. but uh, like yeah. us uh, I think us I prefer lads. the two the two stages just and, and like keep cause like old Koi Fest lineups were just enormous I know and mm-hmm. it was just yeah it, yeah. yeah. it remember, was like something the, to yeah. like you know yeah, yeah. it felt like a real festival like you were oh, missing yeah dope bands to see other dope bands you yeah, know yeah. and you're like man but i want to be here so you go for like 10 minutes of one set and then you're running to go yeah. see somebody else and it was like really exciting but yeah then i feel like it was kind of partitioned because you had those people that would just hang out at main stage like the whole entire time almost yeah, your or whatever. Yeah, yeah and they like they didn't indulge themselves in some of the smaller local acts yeah, which isn't yeah. necessarily a bad thing because i'm sure there was crossover where people went to see the main stage acts mm-hmm. and while they're waiting around or whatever would go see somebody else yeah. but yeah I, I feel like it almost grew to this like unsustainable yeah proportion mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. no with, with local festivals it's definitely the challenge is keeping the balance of having big enough bands to draw people out who wouldn't normally go see local bands Mm -hmm. and have them actually see the local bands and want to have them keep coming out to those local band shows to kind of grow the scene but yeah it's definitely the challenge is like making sure you're not like putting all of the money towards the guarantees of the giant bands and then that's what kills the festival yeah for sure so Yeah. yeah. No would help. And then they don't show up. Periphery R- showing R- up. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Clowns. Yeah. Balloon animals. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. Just I'm down with that. Cards. One thing I was, I was thinking about. Uh, Wait, isn't that ever after? Don't they have like clowns and balloon animals and circus rides and shit? Do they have circus nope. rides at ever after? Yeah. Wow, that's gnarly. I've, I've never, never been, but I've seen like photos. They have yeah. like tilt the world, like little mini roller coasters, and is that the electronic thing? dance music? Yeah. yeah. People yeah, dress up like troll up dolls and shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> I liked what you said about like, I think like if so, say the main stage, if everyone were to just hang out at the main stage and just see all the big bands, you know, you're missing out on like a band you might think is cool, like on one of the like the indoor venues just around the city. But with Hope Fest, even the locals were on like the big stages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sick, and uh, I, you know, it just gives it's just more opportunity for for those. Sure, like, and that's like crazy bands. morale for yeah. like oh, you guys. Yeah. You're like, oh, was... we're we're of like equal exactly. to these yeah, guys, felt, right? It, it's like we're not being shoved in the chrysalids theater where there's like three <laughs> dudes <laughs> and one dude's like passed out and vomiting miles. on the Shout floor. Shout out to the gig. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the, these areas were cool too because they had them. something that like catered more towards people who were more comfortable in like those local shows which I mean like like some of us still are I'd sooner I'd sooner kind of have a more intimate event than like some big main stage but sure. then again like you're absolutely right for morale it was amazing like mm. for us like sharing the same stage as like Let mm. Live that one year was absolutely yeah. fucking bonkers and we were like in like disbelief like oh, oh my really god cool. like like I think I think we were still Lancaster at the time because that was that was 2015 Ooh, and but but oh, we were this Koi, current yeah. we were this current Koi lineup here I think yeah 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 and we 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 like they ended up putting us on main stage it was like okay okay really cool. I guess I don't know <laughs> I <get> it. <laughs> like, it was it was really cool yeah it was it was definitely very uplifting to be to be up there and to be in and on on the main event kind of stage right that was cool yeah I think That's that cool. um what you were saying before about you know Koi having that kind of like double stage thing was really mm-hmm. cool that Hope not Fest. only yeah sorry Hope Fest yeah. geez, mm-hmm. what I'm saying um was really cool about uh, not only did it you know allow you to kind of feel like there was equal like the the playing field was like leveled amongst all the bands but it also was cool because while one band was performing the other band was like sound checking and setting up yeah. mm-hmm. so basically there was this like five minute top span between performances which yeah. kind of just kept everybody like okay I gotta go to the next one gotta go to the next sure, one gotta go to the next sure. show there was no just like the delay, levels were just really, kept up that whole time yeah, yeah I think that was really like uh, uh, a really important part in keeping the crowd engaged because you know usually if there's like half an hour before bands in a festival mm-hmm. people will you know like go for a drink go for a smoke maybe go get something to eat mm-hmm. realize they can't come back in can't go back in <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I don't think Maxwell. I, I I wish Maxwell's would like serve food. Yeah, I, I thought it was like the law they, for a, a, an established, you know, for a place that sells 
like alcohol only yeah. to sell yeah, food, they, but some companies get away like with like selling chips. chips. Yeah. yeah, they weren't they letting like people back. Like, or something? They weren't letting people back they in. And they, left. they used to sell hot dogs, didn't they? Popcorn. No, Maxwell's had pizza. They had a little pizza. They had a little pizza thing. Remember? Pizza. Yeah, because I bought a pizza there. Yeah, I'd love to try Maxwell's pizza. I think they just ordered from Maxwell's pizza. Maxwell's classic pizza. Maxwell. Maxwell. Yeah, it's like Paul Maxwell. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, with yeah. like a chef's hat or something. Yeah. <laughs> with a little apron on. Yeah. Alright, so um pertaining to Hope Fest still, um, I think we've kinda heard like a lot of the positives about it. What's like one thing you guys would ch- change about it for next year? Was there anything? Whoa. You don't you mm. don't have to like dig for anything if it doesn't come yeah. to mind like right away. Just like something where you kind of got off the stage and you were like or the next day you were like, Man, I could have gone. I don't know. I I think this is like, I think they've fully like accomplished this step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So if anything, it would just be to like continue this. Cool. Like this direction. I think it's going to like blow up again. You hear that, Kyle? You fucking nailed it. I don't know if you nailed it. Great job. You nailed it. I hope Kyle went home that night thinking like, yeah, I did. I did good today. (laughs) Because he should. It was. Yeah. So I, love I know. I know. On his fast. personal uh, social media accounts, he was gushing quite a bit for for the turnout and how yeah, the bands yeah, performed yeah. and everything was really yeah. sweet. Oh, well, he should be, man. Yeah, best. he made that. Yeah. He made Proud it. dad. Proud dad. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hi Kyle. Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Daddy Wap. Seen dad, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Romancer has received a couple questions from some of their fans. Ooh. Hopefully none of their enemies. In the old instant mm. messaging box. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll um, so we're going to duck into that, see see what their fans have Hell to ask. Yeah. We're going to slide into that today. Hey, hey. <laughs> Let's slide into oh these DMs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go deep. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, wait. Just like Be- before that, in. Adam, <laughs> I'm supposed to ask <laughs> you, um, <laughs> what can you tell me about Mr. Houghton's socks and sandals routine? Wow. <laughs> Mr. Houghton. Oh, oh dude. I... I <laughs> I mean, it's been it's been a long time since high school. Mr. Houghton is my was my music teacher from grade nine to super twelve. Uh, he's like it definitely like I remember visiting uh, recently, like the, like within like the last year, and seeing Mr. Houghton almost crying just because like I just like he has just such a special place in my heart. Like love Mr. Houghton so much. His uh, socks and sandals pretty legendary. That's fantastic. Yeah, just, we we like. It was always it was always kind of known in the room. It was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and is it is it true that he um, would constantly try to bar you guys from playing uh, Reptilia by the Strokes? Who who are you talking to right now? <laughs> You're like Nardwar right now. <laughs> this is like this is some Nardwar shit. Yeah, <laughs> romance. We have Your to romance know. Yeah. <laughs> but who? Where do you get? I need to know where you get your. I'll tell you from. off air. Okay, good. Uh, sorry, <laughs> what uh, Reptilia? Yeah. Yeah, we had a. Uh, um, uh, Riley Moore, uh, Hansel, Beck Mayer, <laughs> Brandon Lockwood, they're always like playing like, you know, Reptilia or, so- or something, or like Robbie Carvalho playing Dream Theater. Or Robbie something. Carvalho. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, great. You know, Robbie- oh, oh, man. Yeah. I'll have to yeah. bring that up for Lockwood shout too when he to, comes uh, on, I guess. Sh- shout out to Sierra. Sierra's hey. fucking yeah. sick. Yeah, I just wanted to pick your brain on that, see what your yeah. reaction was. Oh my gosh, yeah, I hope it was. <laughs> I hope it was the reaction you had. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Mr. Houghton. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, it's so funny. Uh, Mr. Houghton said, uh, this was before I, like, took singing lessons or anything. I was in choir. Mr. Houghton, I think, like, he, he, he I think I had just, like, sang something really bad. Uh, like, the tenors. Oh, great. Tenors. Here, here, here you go. Sing your part. And then, and it was, it was our turn. Uh, I just I didn't really know how to like control my voice very well back in the day. I think I like just belted something like really bad, and he was like, I think he like made a comment about me being tone deaf. <laughs> 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 that was a, that, was, that was funny. Look at him now. Just Look at him so, now. So <laughs> so so. Look at me now, Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. I love him. Uh, all right, this questions. Uh, Severia asks, uh, what is your writing process like? Uh, it, w- we talked about this earlier like it used to be a lot of like creating uh, instrumentals first like the most exciting roller coaster we could possibly make just like instrumentally and then we'd throw vocals on top and now it's more like song first trying to you know tell a story uh, you know, like 
uh, Ben's Ben has like been killing it with lyrics. He's like he, he's written I think one full song by himself, and then all the new songs we've been doing so far have all been like fifty fifty. Me and Benny. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll sort of we'll sort of have this kind of this this cool little back and forth where we get uh, like the satisfaction of our like collaborative efforts like and mm-hmm. when we get when we meet up like you know like if, if we can like once a week sort of thing and then we'll we'll kind of bang out as much as we can like that'll set the kind of set the stage for a song we'll split off and we'll we'll do more writing and more elaborating on our own ideas for it right we'll meet back up and kind of share and compare right mm-hmm. and, uh, and and that's really exciting for how it uh, for how it starts turning out instrumentally we're i, th- I, th- I think we're incorporating a lot more jazzy kind of funky themes at least i'd like to think we're, like we're definitely so, getting way more jazzy yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's an exciting step that's, yeah. that's an exciting step that i think i think like writing honeybee kind of helped us to transition towards right mm-hmm. and that's why we're that, that's why we're seeing that as such like a transitional step album right is because it's making it more it, it it gave us the liberty to kind of experiment more i think right that's how far that's along really are you guys now. with the writing of um, your, your new project uh, i think they're like in terms of like full songs that are like like 90 percent done like all like 95 like like that we can play like all together i think w- we have around like three right now mm-hmm. and then there's like lots of like fragmented ideas and like we want the album to have a lot of uh like like uh interludes and like like fun samples and like not like a skit, but like kind of something that would function as like a skit, like, yeah. a, like a rap album. Don't, like a Snoop Don't go too hard on the skit. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just talking I, last week about skit, how much we hate like some nasty sex skits and stuff. Oh, uh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Let me just... <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what's another track? Uh, when are we coming to play London next? Uh, we play uh, London on the 24th. I'm waiting for you to say it. Fourth. Fourth. This uh, Thursday, January 24th at Rum Runners. With Bogues, super talented songwriter mm. from Nashville, uh, Murfreesboro, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Sweet Tooth. Nice. Amazing, like, prog, melodic, math, pop, post-hardcore band. Uh, and then Every we genre. have Heavy Gloom. And Bob's, uh, it's like a new project from uh, Bob, blah, Bob blah. Ca- Cal- Caldwell. Blah, <laughs> blah, blah. blah. Uh, yeah, and he's such a good songwriter, such a good vocalist, so expressive. We love him. And who else is on that show? Like, Millhouse. And Millhouse. Millhouse. And we're lucky to have Millhouse on uh, so uh, half the Canadian dates on, on our next tour, which is, uh, and Millhouse is just probably the coolest up and comer from Toronto right now. Mm. And uh, yeah, they're just like stupid talented. The guitarist, very, he's, he's a blues guy. And uh and uh Mike the drummer he's like he's drums. not he's not human yeah he's no. not human he's so they're both so creative they'll do like fun loops and like even on their live session they'll like that like that's so scary to me how you can like use a loop pedal live and have it be like have it work and be in, in sync yeah. and stuff that's so scary I've watched fr- I've watched friends fail at that live and it's always like ah, but then like Millhouse I just it's like. I'm waiting for it to the fuck failure. up, but it do- never happens, and it always sounds so dope. Did you want to do a sure a new question? Yeah, I got one. Uh, favorite Ontario band? Ben, you go first. All right, we're we're each gonna like just start naming off a few. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out there and say Exalt for sure. Yeah, you guys been beating it up forever. Uh, pass it down the list. Uh, for everyone. for doing Waterloo, uh, still we got Goldfinch, Courage mm-hmm. My Love. I thought we were gonna do like one each. Okay, yeah. Keep oh, going, yeah, going, yeah, going. Each. <laughs> <laughs> Just nurse. I can't the thing say right one. There, you can't say one. <laughs> Oh no! Like I can't say just one. Oh, yeah, no, so no. Yeah, one of us can say just one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know what? All right, I'll stick by my answer. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I like just I pick one you've been grooving with. Yeah, yeah. Grooving it's with. Not, it's not. It's not shit well, on anybody. Well, Waterloo, else. or you can move on to a different city. Well, like one I gotta say is New Design. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sure. Not just because the guy who asked the question is in New Design, <laughs> but because New Design, but Fucking because sick. New Design is awesome and we love playing with them all yeah. the time. Oh yeah. Big ups uh, to Nighttime in Kansas too. Oh, that's a oh, Nighttime wow. in that Kansas. Is a, that is a huge Castlefield, huge, huge movement they're creating. Pine. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Bearings in Ottawa. Bearings, huge cosmic, huge yeah. 
fucking cosmic. Terry, Terry Green. Green. Mm. Terry uh, Green machine. Sh- Shipley Hollow. Shipley Hollow. We love certainty. Shipley. certainty. We love Certainty. Dude, I don't know a single one of these bands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Flug, gotta hit up more shows. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Flug is Flug. the homies. Rip Flug. Um, Downstream, rest in peace. Downstream, rip. rip. Rarity. Rarity. Uh, uh, side notes and life hold from Brampton. Mm-hmm. What up, Kai? Uh, another city, uh, London. We got Bodie Jar, Cheapside. This reminds me of like the end of a uh, Sublime's Sublime. record. Yeah, <laughs> 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 just like, yeah, 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 they're just shouting out everybody. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, we could go on. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what? In, in, honest... post, in post, I'm gonna put their little melody underneath this. Oh, yeah, do it. <laughs> and I'm honestly half terrified to forget anybody because yeah. they're all just friends. So. Yeah. And it's literally yeah, if well, I you forget can just anybody, shout out all of, all bands <laughs> rocking in Ontario, man. They're all they're Basically, all so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any and band good we've ever com- complimented. Thank you for playing with us. Do uh do any of you guys want to chime in with a local band? Yeah. Danger Liker. Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. <laughs> shout out to Danger Liker. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Danger Liker? Parliament Owls in Ottawa. Oh Hell yeah, yeah. Wow. dude! Shipley, Wait, you know, Shipley Hollow. You know, Marcus plays in Shipley Hollow. Oh, as well. okay. My cousin's in Parliament Owls. He's, he's okay. Oh no way! <laughs> was that Devlin? Yeah, Devlin's alright. Yo, yo Devlin, Devlin fucking shred, dude. Yeah, rest in peace, Gunho, Gunho Catalyst. Oh, um, that. lately I've been trying to well. This past week, I was trying to prod PK to listen to Dude, Block Parent. You did not try Block doing that. <laughs> Block Parent. They're like this punk apparatus going on in town right now. Uh, I think they just put out a new tape the other day. They just played at Harmony, and, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they got this crazy fucking raw energy to them. And some people might say that it's been done before, but I don't think this kind of power has really come through the city in a long time, and I think it's really cool. Righteous. Plus their artwork's fucking savage. <laughs> What's the album called? Ah, uh, shit, I can't remember. Perfect. Do you remember? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Perfect. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. That was helpful. Block Parent, shout out. Yep. Shout yeah. out to the Block Parent. Oh, there's another question. Uh, it's how did you all meet? Hmm. I feel like Nathan, Nathan is definitely a big like connector in this band like yeah he, yeah so he's not here today which is a bummer is he still working what time is it yeah he's still working I remember meeting riley at the 515 after his his band played credit valley nathan played drums in that band uh and i just remember him doing like cool like pentatonic solo pentatonic and i was just solos. like hey <laughs> some nice um, pentatonic See going on there, <laughs> and then he was just like, "Ha ha!" And then uh, that was it. That was the interaction. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's literally all I knew Adam for for like two years. Yeah, that's and a guy. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how did I meet? How did I come to? How, how, how did you guys come to find me? Was I was living where in the did, forest. Where did you find yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the in the forest in the dumpster. Who can say? Um, yeah. I, I think I think we met up kind of through Andrew Prosser because yeah. uh, when when he was at a time <laughs> in Lancaster. Which one? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah one multiple. of the multiple. <laughs> we're, are, are we sure there's multiple? <laughs> no. Andrew Prosser from from Baden. Tall, tall, tall. tall. Uh, I mean, white, Caucasian. I thought tall. there was only one. <laughs> multiple. I played in a multiple. band with Andrew, Andrew. Yes. And uh, when I when that band dissolved and I started another <clears throat> band with the same name, Lancaster. Uh, Andrew was also in that. Nathan was in that, and uh, we had, I think. We didn't have Ben yet. No, we, yeah. we play. We played with our was, friend Dave. Yeah, uh, David Vandersloot, and uh, and then I think uh, Dave moved to Calgary, and Dave was sick. It was it was nice playing with Dave. It was just like I'm not gonna let Dave leave. Stop me. Who else plays bass? That's sick. And I remember uh, I went to a youth group thing with Andrew, and yeah. I, I saw Ben playing on stage. I think Ben, even though he was playing like worship music, like like youth group songs on stage like Ben was still kind of like into it low key were you doing it the way that you that you do he had had these big old big old plugs Ben just like just like he he, he, Ben just looked like he was already in a van and it was just like oh I need this I I love I love this guy and I, I I don't know when I when I talked to him like it was, prob- it was probably at like one of those like like Woji meetings or something like that. Yep. We used to. We what does Woji stand for? Uh, Waterloo Oxford Jesus Initiative. When hey, I, when I was still shout with out our boy Jesus. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks uh. and shit. Um, yeah, like. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, um, yeah. When I when I was still like in the church, um, very heavily involved. Like I was in the, the worship team there, like for the youth group, and eventually, it sort of started to become very much like a like a like an ongoing band dynamic rather than just like okay, whoever comes up on Sunday plays kind of thing, right? Or whoever's scheduled on Sunday plays, right? It's the same guys coming. Yeah, yeah. It, it sort of ended up being like the same thing. We would get together for jams. We would we wouldn't we would never get together for originals, but we actually ended up playing like a show. Uh, at, at another church and then we ended up playing a whole bunch of times at the uh, at Waterloo Oxford School like a, a whole bunch of times in their gym uh, and we opened for like two tell and like huge that's huge when I met you acts that like we actually liked back then it was and I still I, I think I, I would still suffice it to say I like two tell they're cool yeah um, and they were they were cool they're no longer together but yeah like that was that was back then that's when I met you guys but this is the first I think project I've really kind of given myself to and it's allowed me like liberties not just to play like worship music and kind of stand around my eyes closed on stage right mm-hmm. it's fun it's I fun, think, uh, I think it's it fun and interactive now benny uh <laughs> i think i do remember asking you if you wanted to join the band do yes you know, do you remember that i do yeah i remember that, that was uh, in a bar yeah or was it like a sit-down place because they had wings they served wings there it was it, it was, was it was, in, it, was um, it was it was tusky tusky was there yeah did fire on the forest play that show? Oh my god! Oh my god! It's they all did. flooding. They did. Did. And, it was, and they had an after party at their huge place, or at Des- Teskey Baldwin's huge place. Um, yeah. Okay, this band, Fire on the Forest, who we knew back then, like kind of through Andrew Prosser as yeah. well. They were, uh, how would you describe them? Kind of, kind of acoustic emo. They were, it, they were acoustic yeah. emo. Yeah, and it was like I remember you sitting sitting down. I remember meeting a bunch of cool people that yeah. night, and then I, I I don't know if I'd ever hung out with Ben, but I I just remember like, hey Ben. One jam sometime. Yeah. Join my band. <laughs> and it, I, I, I was that. I was in disbelief. Like I was like, oh yes, yes, I I would absolutely love to do that. Yeah. I saw that because you and I think it was at this one tavern out in um, like Petersburg or P- Petersburg or something like out out there in the sticks or um, something like that. And uh, and I I saw you and Andrew do an acoustic set and uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, mm-hmm. that that's I think how I got my one of my first experiences with you guys. Right, and that's sort of when it was kind of coming to a a tapering off point for just doing that and then kind of what when you invited me to have me in like on like Lancaster I was like absolutely like I'm, yeah. I'm fully down to come up for some jams and I remember having a, a huge PV 115 combo just this Damn. disgusting yeah. piece of shit amp that so some would lug around him. <laughs> yeah. these are some details man yeah, I remember this all the details. This, this is a defining moment of my life god damn it so, yeah. <laughs> yeah but no I remember being very excited when you when you asked me to join Lancaster yeah. that was sick did you dan- did you like jump up really high? You know, you know, you know, you know that thing that like in the Bugs Bunny movies how they like kind of conk themselves with a hammer when they're horny. You know, like I sort of did that. Yeah, that was that was in effect the response that it garnered. Yeah, and that is how Ben Rome mansard Adam. Oh, oh god. <laughs> yeah, that's cool though. Yeah, that's super dope. That was really exciting. And then I guess like. Like I've never know. been courted like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell how like you met Nathan. You <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So Nathan and I were in a band together in like high school, uh, and then just after that, after we both left that band, we Nathan wow. joined this band. But how did you meet Nathan? How did I meet him? Yeah. Uh, it was just like one of those awkward high school hangouts. Oh. Uh. Yeah, there's actually, like, a picture of, like, the first day we met each other, and, like, we're standing beside each other, and we don't really know who each other is, and we're just, like, I I remember it being very awkward, but then we became really good friends after that, but, yeah. Is that on Facebook, do you think? Is that one of those bush party, old awkward bush party photos where you're, like, (laughs) with backpacks on with a flash on, you're, like, somebody took it on their LG chocolate, their LG chocolate slide, probably something like that, yeah. The full, like, like, West 49 The kind back, no, the kind back, yeah, I got their Osiris shoes, like, board shorts, like, oh, man, I'm gonna, dude, can I just... That's a look. I, That's a I'm look. definitely going to deep dive as we Oh, it's going to take you like 15 minutes. It's like way back. How many if it's still there. How many pictures do you have in your <laughs> Oh, I don't even know whose profile. It's pro- I'm probably not even Yeah, dead. I think you can span the entirety of my social media history, at least photos of myself. You just go like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like one page, maybe. Yeah. It definitely wouldn't have been something. You're such probably. a vain yeah. person. Yep. You guys got any uh, more, more fan questions? Oh, do you? Um... Well, what about that one from Julia? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I think she had a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Julia. 
No. I really, really. No, she didn't. <laughs> and she's hap- probably happy that it's I'm not going to answer it. It's your sister, Adam. You have, you have no, to say it. No, no. No, I'm not. Julia. I, I think no. it's a good idea. Julia. I'm just going to say, Julia, I'm disappointed you asked, <laughs> asked me that. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Anybody seen the Good Morning Julia video? Yeah. No, oh, man. Why? It's so <laughs> weird, man. I'm in. Uh, you guys want to watch it live? You want to yeah, see this? Yeah, see yeah, okay, this is watch. super weird. I oh, can't. No. Oh. Okay, this, this reminds this me of me like so this man has a goatee. Yeah, yeah. So like, apparently, the apparently, the he thing. met this no. girl in a gym, or he saw oh. her in the gym. He looked at her name on like the sign-in sheet, and then chased after her in the parking lot, going, "Hey, Julia. Hey, Julia. Um, mm, yeah. I'm oh, so and so from whenever. Um, I just wanted to know if you want to go out on like a yeah, date or something." And she was like, "Yeah, I'll take your number." So yeah. she hands her phone with like a contact hi. sheet, and then this guy hits the call button. Tell so now he has her day. number, oh, and he sends no. her this video the next day. Getting a look at you was probably one of the greatest moments of my life. Ah. You were so beautiful. You don't know how beautiful you are to me. Devin, you want to kill our cam? I mean, just just make it invisible so precious. everyone can see this. And uh, But it's been sitting in my mind when you said to me you want to go back with your ex-boyfriend. Yep. <laughs> Please erase him from your memory. Oh. Don't ever go back in the past. I know, because oh. I've been there. And I understand when you know, you're trying to find somebody and you go on dates and nothing compares to your Note ex. how many fans this there man has in his house. Better person out there. Oh my gosh. Julia, There's like two behind him there. There's like four in the living room. I will good love you like you've never loved me before. <laughs> I am I'll cherish you. Look at that crazy uh, beard, too. Feel like a woman, a real woman. Uh, uh, and believe uh, me, after you experience me, you won't even know who your ex boyfriend is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. Experience Open up your heart to me in your arms. Yeah, your heart. <laughs> yeah. Let's go full <laughs> throttle. Uh, yeah, your heart. Yes. Yeah, you your arms. <laughs> I just, uh, well, I just looked in your eyes and I just melt. Anyhow, I'm heading off to work. This is my cute little home. Everything you see behind me, I built everything. Every square inch from crown TV. mold to chair rail to floors to lighting to plumbing. To the fans. Windows. <laughs> so this is the type of guy you're getting. I'm a very handy guy. And uh, Fuck me. I'd love to build you whatever you want. You're a sweetheart. Wow. So, I hope this video doesn't scare you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know that. Okay? And I look forward to uh, going out to dinner with you. So, let's make it happen. Okay, Vi- next video. Ooh. Same vein. Search Briona, B-R-I-O-N-A. Is that is that, that one kid who yes. does like yes, the it is. baby girl? Hey, yeah. baby girl. This is some of the best oh, cringe that was like, ever see. So, baby girl, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if I can uh, handle cringe So, here we go. Anymore. That's it. Oh, no. that was 3.5 like watching a, million views? Let's oh, fucking yeah. That was like watching a neck guy. beard who just had a goatee. <laughs> I just wanted to wish you happy what seven months. What the fuck is going on? Ah, seven? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's no way this is like, fucking real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I do. I love you so much. Oh my god. I love you more than there are. All the hairs. Dude, I can't. (laughs) 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 The reflection of these guys' teeth. How is that possible? Even two silver front teeth. (laughs) For every time that you were on my mind, I would be richer than everyone in the world. Okay. Dude, so it's cringe. Good. It kinda looks like Frodo. It's just really good cringe, okay? You can change uh, that. How much more time do we have left? Oh, Alright, kill it, kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna kill the food. Ah, <laughs> keep it going, keep just, it going. This is the best cringe. I love it. And I'm never gonna stop loving you. Ooh, there oh, it is. No. Do you hear that, guys? That's the sound of everybody tuning out from the live show. Yeah. yeah. Those magic yeah. Words. Uh-oh. <laughs> Damn. No, oh, no, dude. No, no, yes. Come on. Do you want to try it on some of these yeah. mics? <laughs> oh, God. I got a beard. I could just rub it on it. You know. <laughs> that freeze frame, though. It's got a couple million now. views. Anyway, the, beard the, oil the moral of the story is that I just wanted to dedicate that to your sister, Julia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Good morning, Julia. That, that, was the, that was the point of all this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> there's your question about dicks, Julia. <laughs> hey, the truth comes out. Yeah. <laughs> so was that it? You guys got anything else? Um, Some you want to play? I got, I got one. I, I got one too. 
No Hits Music asks, what kind of microphone is that? Oh, it's a, uh, it's a Samson con- wide diaphragm condenser microphone that I it's bought. A, it's a that. Samsung wide <laughs> diaphragm <laughs> condenser mic. Yeah, there. Bought that in, yeah, a, in, a, in a pack, like a, one of those drum mic packs, and it just came with two condensers, this guy and some other ones. So maybe if No Hits picks one up, he might have one hit? Mm. Hey! What a hey. M- no. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we got a question from Isaac. Uh, Isaac. Pick one song to cover from Radiohead, Elvis, or The Wiggles. So you only get one song from all those three? Or Maybe. one song for each? See, I don't know any Wiggles songs, so that's going to be... Yeah, yeah we I only know like, the Wiggles Fruit songs. Salad tune. I think. The Fruit Salad yeah. one is fucking iconic. It's a banger. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> It would definitely be the fruit salad one from the Wiggles. Um, Radiohead for me would be Weird Fishes. Hmm. What do you think? What do you think our Elvis song would be? Rob, the classic. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Burning love's so good. Yeah. How about Sicko Mode by Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of Sicko Mode yeah, by yeah. Elvis Presley? Oh, by uh, so sad. <laughs> Travis Five. No, Maroon, I only know Maroon, Maroon, Scott, Scott, Elvis Scott. 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 Maroon Scott. I like Maroon Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't wait. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything you guys want to plug before the, the, the wrap up here? Yeah. Uh, Any upcoming uh, things you guys want to plug? Shows. Not songs. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, but, s- but soon. It's almost soon. the 24th. New things in the work. Mm. Exposed. You EP coming soon. <laughs> I, uh, where, no where, band. Big things, <laughs> dude. Big things coming soon. Yeah. Where can they find you? Uh, where where can people uh, <laughs> hear them? Hear on you? the internet or yeah. right here, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Okay. We're on the internet. Perfect. Yeah. You're on Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Twitch stream. Yeah. Spotify. Follow follow Romancer on Instagram. Follow him on their Bandcamp. Uh, follow him on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your tunes from. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any last points you guys want to make? Fist the bell! Fist that bell! Fist that bell! Fist it! Fist that bell. Yeah, so drop a follow if you want to... If, if you dug the shit you listened to today. <laughs> uh, don't click follow if you didn't enjoy it at all. Cause or we're do gonna it. Do the same Actually, thing. Or follow. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do the same thing every week. We'll be back next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern Here. time. Sub and follow to Ape Audio. Hell hey. yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. Peace. 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 Peace.